All right, everybody. You already know what that means. When you hear those air horns, it's about to go down. That's right. Come on now. Thank you. Thank you. Calm down. Calm down. Come on now. So uh, as we're jamming out, let people fill in the room. We got a lot to go over today. Yes, we do. Because uh, we're going to be talking about video. That's right. After Nikon has just bought red camera, we need to talk about videos. Come on, photographers, especially Nikon ones. All right. Um, I want to say thank you all for who is tuning in right now. Give yourself a round of applause. Come on now. Um, I already got a few comments. I did. So Mark says, uh, can't wait. Awesome. I think that was way earlier, of course. And then we also have Cooley in the house saying greetings. Thank you, sir. And we have Roy. Hey, hey thank you for uh, checking on in. Really appreciate that. And then um, Roy says 90% of us paid work is still a part of from the occasional video showing how something works. Hey, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. But I, my, my concern with the topic really is about preparing us, right? And at least having that mindset. Now, I'm not saying we all need to go, you know, full steam ahead with video. But what I am saying is it's important for us to acknowledge the impact. Right. So that's all we're real. That's what today is really about is about discussing the impact of video. So with all that said, I am currently streaming with the Nikon Z8. That's right. You heard it for the first time. OK, for the first time I'm streaming with a Nikon camera and it's the Nikon Z8. And I have the I believe I have. Yeah, I have the 40 millimeter f 2.0 se lens attached so let me know what you think how this stream looks um what do you think of the color quality etc etc me setting this camera up this nikon z8 for as my webcam definitely i can notice a few things different from using the panasonic lumix s5 mark ii camera um pros and cons on both but both of them have reliable autofocus, right? You can see it's sticking on my eye. I don't see it hunting or anything. And I'm using a very inexpensive prime lens. So if you need a quick way for you to improve your um, virtual game, I mean, your virtual video, you know, how can it virtual video, your your webcam game, then getting your a basic camera, slapping on a detachable lens, a prime lens, I would say at least 1.8, and I'm shooting this at f2. And when I had my Panasonic, I also shot all my webcams at one uh, f1.2. So just by using your camera, you can step up your webcam game, you know, tremendously, quite honestly, to the point where people really do enjoy the quality difference of using an actual camera. So, um, oh, great question, Roy. Roy comes in and says, uh, Question, are you using the Z8 HDMI or USB port? I am using the HDMI. HDMI, and then the HDMI goes right into, here, let me take that off. It's right here, right there. Okay, that's the, that's the Nikon Z8. This is my overhead camera, which is number two. And then number three is for whatever camera I have attached to the stream. So it goes from the Nikon Z8, which is right here. Then it streams right to here. So it's HDMI. Okay. So that's how I do my live streams. And um, even when I had the Panasonic, it went from HDMI to an Elgato capture card. It's called a cam link. And then that cam link on its end was USB. And then that's what went into my computer. So everything from the HDMI straight into there. Um, when you do the HDMI, you don't need any um, capture software or anything like that or any drivers and stuff. It just works seamlessly. And it's just, it's just, it's just feeding straight video data straight from the camera. Whatever the camera sees, you see. You just have to remember to take off the information display. Uh, in a Nikon as well as Panasonic. Otherwise, you would see all the horizontal lines and everything else. 
But this is the fastest and most effective way to step up your game. I'm using a simple two-point lighting. I have a Loom Cube uh, panel right here to camera left. And then I have another one because it came in a pair over there giving me some edge lighting. Okay. So that's just a real ineffective way. And that's why, again, understanding video, implementing it helps you to step up the quality of your live streams in this case and other things, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, Mark says, Z8 is life. Absolutely. I love my Z8. Um, but I noticed I've been using the Z9 quite often. And I was like, you know what? If I'm going to do a webcam, since I use the ZF for a lot of my everyday, have fun, relaxing photography, I figured the Z9 it would be more of my client work. I was like, you know what? The Z8, I could probably use for webcamming, see how that works. Um, only thing is I, did, I do kind of wish I had a flip screen just so I could kind of queue up and touch the menu without having to get out of my chair. That would be nice. But regardless, I have a, a five-inch monitor attached above it just so that I can, let me see if I can show you guys, actually. Here we go. Check this out, everybody. Hey, look at that. All right. So I'm using the Z9 attached to this. Okay. And um, there we go. Okay. So you can see right there. Let me switch this. This uh, Yucko. There we go. That's a little bit better, right? There we go. Okay. So. There is the five inch monitor right on top of the Z8. You see the Z8 right there. I have the, and then the uh, HDMI out of the Z8 goes straight to the input of the, um, look at the autofocus, it, look, it finds my eye, um, to the monitor. And then the output of the monitor is what goes into my um, ATEM Mini Pro. Okay, so just FYI, that's how that's going down. All right, I hope that helps for anybody that's trying to build out a streaming rig or a streaming like workspace. That's one way to do it. That's the way I do it. And by the way, this right here, okay, this right here is a teleprompter. I can put my phone right there. I have a, I have an app. And then it becomes a teleprompter right there when I need to record something that I can't really, you know, it helps me save time. I don't use it as much as I used to. I'm pretty good at freestyling my videos now. But if I do something for pro promotional purposes, I probably just um, would use that to save myself a heck of a lot of time of editing. Uh, Mark says, I use the cam link for a lot of business clients. Exactly. The cam link is great. You can use it on your laptop. It's only the size of like a thumbstick drive. It's it's really practical. It's really great. I still own, I keep mine. Now I keep it in the laptop. So when I'm on the go and if I have to go live or do a virtual call, I could do so wherever I'm at as long as I have my camera. Um, Mark says, I just got the Panel Pro 2. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Um, I think that's what I have. And it comes with this little carrying case. It's really great. Matter of fact, here it is. The Loom Cube, this right here. Matter of fact, let me, let me, I guess I might as well talk about it. Let's talk about it. All right. Come on now. Let me get into my neck. Let me get into this real quick. Okay. Uh, let me turn this off. The comment. Talk about these. Since we're talking about lighting, a uh, video, we might as well talk about lighting. So. Before we get into that, I'm going to show you this cool setup. I mean, this light, these lights have been really clutch for me. Uh, but before we do, make sure you go ahead, follow me on social media, on Facebook, threads, Instagram, and everywhere else, okay? And trust me, I, I do respond. So go ahead and follow me everywhere else. All the links to my socials are in the description section down below. So feel free, go check them out. Of course, um... I do have some amazing workshop workshops planned uh, two in April, April 7th and April 21st. April 7th is my webinar. That's right. I'm hosting a webinar, how to record video with a Nikon mirrorless camera. And we're going to go through the menu system. We're going to go through 
uh, different uh, video formats, codecs, and everything else, and what is best for depending on the situation you're in. And we're going to go through all that. And um, that was one thing I had to do for myself, being that I've shot so much in uh, still photography for years with Nikon. I never really got into video because I, uh, it wasn't really a, a wholeheartedly reliable system um, compared to some other systems for quite some time. We all know that. But with the Z9 and Z8 and the ZF, I've really, it got me rethinking Nikon, quite honestly, and opening my eyes to being able to have Nikon for stills and not having to bring another brand and another set of lenses when I need to shoot video for a client. So with all that said, since I've, it's benefited me, I want to bring that to all of you. And that's what I'm going to be doing at this webinar. And currently I'm offering a 10% off. All you got to do is click the link in my description section or go to robertsilverphotography.com to find out more. Now, you might be asking yourself, what do you mean go to your website? Well, it's very, very easy to do just that. All you got to do, hold on, let me see if I can share my screen here. Right on, there we go. Okay, here we are. Bam. So if you go to my website, robertsilverphotography.com, you click right here at workshops at the top, or you could click on the image here, okay? And then you just head on over to my uh, workshop site and um, feel free to join a newsletter right here. And then, um, and then there you go. Here's all the information you need to uh, register for that webinar, okay? And again, that 10% off lasts, uh, I think it's going to end by the end of this month. And then it goes back to the regular price, okay? So if you're looking to do recording video with Nikon mirrorless cameras, that's what I'm going to be covering. Not DSLR, but my mirrorless cameras specifically. And then we're also going to talk about lighting and different components when it comes to video production and stuff like that. So we're going to be talking about all that and accessories, obviously, and stuff, so forth and so on. All right. Now, my other workshop I have coming up is Mastering Studio Portrait Lighting, which I will be doing an in-person, immersive workshop Sunday, April 21st here in Oakland at a studio. I'll be hiring two models. I got two models ready to locked and loaded for us. And we're going to be going over single two and three point lighting. Okay. That's what we'll be doing in studio. It's a four hour, four hour. That's right. Four hour uh, workshop. Okay. From 10 to 2 PM. So hopefully you can, uh, Come join us for that. And all you got to do is head to robertsilverphotography.com or click the link to my website down below. All right. Now, um, for those who just FYI, tomorrow I have a new video. So if you have, if you didn't, if you haven't checked uh, my Instagram and stuff like that, I've been posting on my stories. But uh, I recent this week we went to Muir Woods over in San Francisco. No, what? Excuse me. It's Mill Valley, right north of San Francisco. And we hiked, me and Venusa. You may know her from my photo shoots. And um, I just bring you along that journey. It's a real cool way to share some photography with you guys without being in a studio or shooting for a client and definitely getting out the city. And um, took the Nikon ZF. I had three lenses with me. And we enjoyed an amazing four-hour hike. We hiked a lot. And um, I shared tons of photos in that video. That will be live tomorrow. So make sure you check in tomorrow or press that bell so that you get a notification when that video goes live. Yeah, I'm excited for it too. All right. So with all that said, um, let me check these comments real quick before we really get into it. Um, hey, Craig, nice to see you here. Thank you very much for tuning in. We got Roy. I don't know why more people don't use a field monitor instead of complaining about the back screen. You're absolutely right. And that's part of the thing with video is that uh, anybody that gets into video, I automatically, you know, I, matter of fact, I mentioned that in a earlier video I made a couple months ago. It was like the main components to like a video rig. And that has to be a film monitor, hands down, because my eyes aren't that good. So I need a bigger screen to understand that is my shot not only framed up right, and there's nothing distracting in the background, but also, is it sharp? Is it in focus? 
All right. Ken Kruk Gaming. Uh, do you use your Alexa 35 as your B cam? Nah, I wish I had an Alexa. Um, I use a Lumix S5 Mark II as my B cam. And but right now, my B cam for my streaming is a GH6. That's what you see right here. The GH6 gives me my overhead cam. And I have a 35, well, excuse me, I have a 12 to 35 millimeter f2.8 lens on there that's a panasonic one so that's my overhead cam okay so just fyi if that's what you meant um mark comes back and says a few of my business clients can't use uh, can't use edit video software must be recorded native and their onboard laptop can uh can is horrible so the cam link is useful for that situation Exactly. Uh, I think for me, it was I didn't have to keep updating the driver and making sure it worked with the latest firmware for uh, my, 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 Mac, my Mac computers. And I noticed that the Panasonic's no longer worked with the latest um, update with my Mac computer. And therefore, it never recognized the Panasonic camera as an option for a webcam. But as soon as I got cam link, it just bypassed all that. And I think it's because I didn't have to hook into the USB-C. It hooked into the HDMI and I bypassed all that internal stuff. So it just gave me a straight direct feed. Um, um, oh, I'm jumping in on the web. Awesome. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I really do. And I think SpongeBob has... Uh, Mark, if you listen closely, I believe SpongeBob has something to say to you. Thank you for your patronage. There you go. So, uh, Mark, I'll see you then. And uh, we're going to have a good time talking about Nikon and mirrorless and, as well, you know, with video. Okay. I'm building out the, um, what do you call it? Not the agenda, the um, curriculum right now. And uh, it's going to be a lot. I'm, I'm, I hope I could fit it all in two hours. We may go over, quite honestly, but. You know, if everybody's enjoying themselves, we're going to do just that. Because I like talking about, well, Nikon and video is a lot of fun. All right. So good. I'm glad to see you there. I hope to see you. And uh, we're going to have a good time. All right. So let's get back to the matter at hand. So um, uh, do I have a product highlight today? Let me see. Actually, I kind of don't. Actually, I do, but no one will really care. But I'm going to talk about it anyway, okay? So let's get to the product highlight, shall we? All right. What I want to talk about is this little thing right here. For this week, we're going to talk about the DJI Pocket number two. That's right. You said number two. This thing's old. Yeah, you might be right, but um, the number three is out. I already ordered it, and unfortunately, there's like a four-week back order on the Pocket 3. But when I went on that hike at Muir Woods, all right, go check out the video. It'll be up tomorrow. It's already – it's going to premiere tomorrow at 3.30. Um, I used this on the hike to record all the B-roll, talking head stuff, and stuff like that, all right? It, you know, you get the combo kit. It comes with the microphone right there. Everything's charged USB-C. As you can see, uh, it's on, which is, let me turn that off. You got your little gimbal. It does 4K. Let me see if we can, uh, there we go. Got your gimbal action. It doesn't want to focus, I think, because it's so thin. But you can do that. Oh, there we go. Um, I love this thing. Now, granted, I definitely have to get the number three because the resolution is bigger. I mean, better. It does up to 4K at 120. It, it also does um, better active tracking. Uh, and the sensor is twice as, twice as large. It's a one-inch sensor versus a half-inch sensor. But the point of me showing you this is that, like, for me to record and create video content on the go, i much rather not have to use up my battery in my phone. And this DJI, even the Pocket 2, you could get this one brand new if you can't afford the new one, which is like almost $700. It is um, 
it is it's under um what is it it's like 300 something dollars it's like half the price and it's still good and i recorded so much great content with this bad boy it really is amazing and the uh, and the audio coming out of this little lav mic is pretty let me see if I get this. there we go it's pretty impressive it really is even though this is the older version it's good we hiked for 4 hours and i didn't go dead i didn't recharge it at all just like this I recorded tons of uh, content and it didn't, uh, I, I think I had at least 30% or something like that left. I had a real, I had a real good amount left. And so I was very impressive and it fits right in the pocket, thus pocket, right? So with that said, if you, if anybody's looking to step up like their, their content game, the DJI pocket, whether it be this one here, the two or the three is going to be a, the best win. I'll be quite honest. I've tried vlogging with uh, the DJI RS3 Mini gimbal with a camera on it and everything else. All that stuff is dead. It's too. It gets too heavy after a while. Uh, you look like a target. Someone might come up and swipe your camera while you're trying to film with the with the gimbal and all that stuff. You try to put it on a tripod. I tried doing it all. The pocket is clutch. It is the way to go. So. That's going to be my product highlight for this week. For anyone looking to create high-quality video content, get that DJI Pocket 2 or the 3. If you can, go straight to the 3 combo kit. It's amazing. And as soon as I get it, I'll do a full review on it. There's already a million videos that already has done a full review, but you haven't seen mine. So hopefully you subscribe and stay tuned. All right, so that's the product highlight for this week. Come on now. Yeah. So, uh, wow, look who's in the house. Man, I haven't seen you marketing in a long time. Yo, yo, I'm excited to learn video now. Nikon bought red. Exactly. And if you can, for every, you know, let me do this. Okay. Cause I'm, you know, I like to be helpful. Okay. I like to be helpful. Here we go. Let me see if I can grab this there and for anyone looking to learn video here is uh how to record video with nikon mirrorless cameras webinar okay i just posted the link in the chat for you to check out the um check out that workshop okay go check it out Check it out for yourself. A very, very fair price. I, I, I think it's extremely fair price. I really do. And it's not just clearly biased. Um, check it out for yourself. Let me see. Let me check. Yeah, there we go. I just pinned it to the top. All right. Check out that webinar. Check out what we're going to cover. If you feel this can help you, if you own any Nikon mirrorless camera, this is going to help you if you're looking to get into more video. And at the end, of course, there will be an open Q&A to pick my brain and uh, and, and also to uh, learn some extra tips and tricks, okay, to help step up your video game. Uh, King goes, your uh, Oak Place, you better hide your cam, hide your lenses, and, and your tripod because everything disappears. 100%. 100%. Okay. And um, and that's why I use, that's why when I do video on the go, I'm pulling this, I'm pulling out a pocket, man. I'm pulling this out. You know, when you have this, you're, you're inconspicuous. I don't have to hold my arm out way out here. I'm just right here and I can get my talk on. I'm looking good. And then as soon as I'm done, press the little button and it, look, it retracts itself. And I put, man, I'm, I'm already done. I'm out of there. And unfortunately, that's just the way it is here in the Bay Area, especially here in Oakland. All right. I got to think that way. Um, are you touching NRAW and NLOG? We'll be talking about those two and especially NLOG. Okay, we're gonna be touching. We're gonna be touching on those again. Um, there's a lot I want to go over during the webinar, right? I'm gonna be talking about the advantages of both of them, of using both those file types and color. You know, color. Uh, we're gonna be talking about color space and stuff like that. The advantages of 
of of the types that you can choose your options and um i'm going to be using the nikon z9 like like this folks so i'm going to be during the webinar we're going to we're going to be able to go through the menu system just like this okay right now this is the z9 i have connected we're going to go through all this we're going to help help folks understand excuse me there we go we're going to help folks understand the options they have when it comes to these settings also let's go to the movie we're going to go through all the video recording menu for sure all right recently with the z9 they just added the shooting menu bank for video we're going to go through all this stuff right here okay video file types the advantages of 264 versus 265 pro res 422 and pro res raw right we're going to go over the file types, like why would you use 4K versus 8K, or why would you use 8K versus 4K, et cetera, and how that affects your video, okay? We're gonna go through all this madness here. Obviously, video quality, image, image area, all that good stuff, okay? So, I'm just, I'm just playing with this dang thing. So there's your end log, your hyper log gamma, HLG, and then your standard. We're going to be talking about that and also what you need to do in order to get the most out of these tones. All right. By default, they're all set to standard. But if you want more color uh, or be able to push and pull your color, get more dynamic range, you might want to look at the end log. Okay. 8-bit versus 10-bit. Why, why does that matter? How does it affect you? There's pros and cons. I would never go lower than 10 bit personally um, and all this good stuff. So we're going to go through that ISO getting correct video exposure, which is different from your, your, uh, your photography in many ways, but it's very re relative. So if you're already shooting photography, you're halfway there to understand video. And if you have a Nikon camera, well, we're going to help you really understand it because that's half this camera. At, if you if you own a, a a Z camera, half of its capability is video. So if you buy it for five grand and only using it, you're only getting two thousand five hundred dollars worth of camera, right? If you're just shooting stills, that's just the way I look at it. Um, are you top F Eflin? Top five F. Oh, what are your top? Oh shoot, man! I, I always got to start with the fifty F one point two. Uh, this is a great question. Um, I would say 85 is great for interviews too. Um, for video, it, it okay. So I guess it kind of mm, a 20. Here's here's one thing that's kind of clutch though. A 24 to 70 is nice to have a zoom, right? So that doesn't hurt. Um, I recently shot my short film and I was shooting with a 24 to 105 for a lot of scenes just because of the versatility of the lens. So, but if you're doing talking head documentaries, I tend to go prime all day. Like a fit, like a, um, 35 and an 85, something like that, a 35 or a 24 and a 50, something like that. So it, it's really hard to say just because it depends on what I'm doing with the video and how I have to capture it. Right. How much time do I have? If I don't have a whole lot of time, I tend to shoot with a zoom just for obvious reasons. If I do have some time, I may shoot with primes. So my top five lens choices may change. So I'm sorry, I can't give you a very direct answer, but it also depends on how I need to capture the video. Okay. I went to that. I remember I went, I went filming it was um, day six and seven of my shoot. Oh, no, 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 five and six. And because time was squeezed, I didn't use any of the primes I brought. I just slapped on. Uh, I had the 24 to 105. Shot at F4 for most of it. And I rock and rolled the whole day. And the only thing I had to really change is like whether I'm going from a shoulder rig to a tripod. So it was, it was quite interesting. Um, all right. So we did all that good stuff. Now let's head to some fact let's head to the to the main event here okay because we got some reasons why i feel uh why photographers should learn some video okay so let's get to the main event come on now
All right, there you go. My very expensive graphics. I do for all of you, okay? Yeah, that's for all you guys and gals. All right, now let's check out the... Um, here we go. Here we go. Five reasons why photographers need to learn filmmaking. And now, filmmaking slash photography, right? That's what we're really talking about, okay? First of all, video is taking over. And when I mean, you know, they're saying with moving images becoming ever more intricately woven into the fabrics of our daily lives, the ability to capture them as a professional level, uh, at a professional level is becoming increasingly essential for anyone working in visual media. And I'm going to have to concur. I'm going to have to agree with that because um, that's how a lot of people spend most of their time on social media. Um Matter of fact, you're watching a stream video, a live video right now. So that's technically video. And uh, not that many people are, you know, reading, uh, which is good and bad. But also with photos, a lot of people who see a photo, they'll see it, press like, maybe a quick comment, and then move on real quick. But video, they're actually committing time. So there's a lot more uh, subconscious value that you're bringing to either to hold someone's attention. All right. It is taking over. You have the TikTok. Obviously, YouTube is, you know, the king of kings. Vertical, whether it be vertical or horizontal video, it's just that is what's happening. And sure, if you've been shooting photography for 30 years and you have a client base and things are working out for you, Mazel Tov, do your thing. But I'm saying for new photographers or for photographers getting into wanting to make this a, uh, uh, an actual uh, income for themselves in 2024 and you're just getting in, video has to be a part of your marketing plan. It has to be a part of your strategy. That is just the way it is. That is it. The, um, the value is there. Like the perceived value of video is there. Next thing is clients expect both. Come on now, let's say it again. <laughs> clients expect both. That's so true, man. Like, seriously. Can contemporary ad campaigns increasingly feature a cross-media suite of assets involving both stills and moving images. As a result, clients today often expect photographers they hire to offer filmmaking services too. Okay? Again, if you're a seasoned photographer, this may not apply to you. You're doing your thing. A lot of seasoned photographers are stuck in their way. That's okay. But what I'm saying is for folks who are looking to get make this into a serious side business or their full time in 2024, these points are real. OK, um, I'm, I'm currently interviewing right now. With a company, OK, to be their in-house videographer. But how do you think help? to reinstill the fact that I'm good at videography, my photography. They saw my photography, I understand lighting, and then they saw the video projects I've done on YouTube as well as my filmmaking. Boom, bada, bang, it got me in the door. Clients expect you to do both. And, it, and if they don't, it only helps you, okay? Video can help you promote your work. Of course it can. It's called TikTok, it's called vertical reels. We're all posting behind the scenes. Um, we're all posting the the moving aspect of how we get things done. People love that behind the scenes stuff. You all do, right? So even if you mostly, look at this. Okay, here you go, OG guys. Come on now. Even if you mostly work with still images and plan to remain primarily a photographer, mastering the basics of filmmaking and videography is extremely useful when it comes to marketing and self-promotion. We can't just lie in the sand. We we are if you're a photographer alone, as I made a video, go check it out. Photography alone would no longer cut it. Um, you can't have that mindset you, unless you already made your money in life. You have money tucked away, and you just want to do this for fun. This does not apply to you. So feel free to refrain from your comments. This applies to those who want to make this a serious part time side hustle or full time situation. Okay. You must at least know video to do self-marketing and self-promotion. I do it all the time. It's one of the easiest ways if you're trying to launch a channel and you don't know how to talk into a camera and have that confidence. Guess what? 
doing short form stories or short form content, uh, stuff like that, and you're talking into your cell phone is a great way for you to practice how to talk directly into a camera. So this could only help you out if not for clients and you don't want to offer that as a service, you could at least help better promote yourself. Um, like when you have your about section in your website, boy, how impactful it would it be if you actually had a 15 to 30 second video promo of yourself talking about how what separates you from the competition to your potential client? That's actually a good idea. I'm going to write that down. Okay. Uh, here it is here. Um, you could splice together a collection of your best shots. That's one of the most go-to things I see on threads. TikTok and uh, 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 YouTube shorts is that a photographer shows like five seconds of behind the scenes and then like a random 10 quick shots in succession. <laughs> right? They're putting together their best shots from that piece of BTS video or producing a slick behind the scenes video from one of your shoots. A well produced video can help you communicate your creative expertise. Yes, they, people like to see your. You're actively, you know, you know what you're doing behind the scenes. They like to see how the uh, how the cake is how the cake is made. Number four, filmmaking is more of a team sport. Like writing and painting, photography can be quite a solitary pursuit. Hours in the studio with the camera, lights, Photoshop for a company to be very productive and rewarding. But sometimes it's good. It's good to work more collaboratively, right? And filmmaking, I don't care what you do in filmmaking and videography, it's a team sport. You need someone to help you with the lights. Uh, you know, they might need a gaffer guy. You might need somebody with grip, understand how to put together all this backdrops and, and, and stands and whatnot um, and hang the lights, right? Um, you might need somebody to help you with audio who's better than you, right? Uh, get a boom guy if you're able to get a boom guy, but at least somebody who understands audio a little better than you. You might need somebody who may just assist you with your camera, help you bring your lenses, stuff like that. So filmmake, and I noticed the better work I've done always involved a good team. When I tried to do everything, then you know the project only you know, it, it, there's a there's a limit there's a there's a plateau I'll reach. But you got to involve a team. You want better quality work, you got to involve a team. And then with a team comes referrals. A team comes uh, that they're going to, hey, I know a guy who could shoot that for you. And that's more people speaking on your behalf or at least that can um, uh, speak kindly on your behalf, meaning as like uh, uh, as a reference. <clears throat> Photographers already understand the essentials of filmmaking. That's one point I wanted to talk about for sure is that Photo you as a photographer, you're already there. You're already there, at least halfway, right? You already understand lighting, aperture, depth of field, and so on. That expertise puts you in a perfect position to expand your skills and add filmmaking, videography to your creative repertoire. This is just really about scaling, right? As, as photographers that are trying to eat, there's only so much you can raise your rates before you price yourself out. You lose clients to the point where you're destitute and et cetera. So what's another way? Offer more. Now, the, one of the easiest things you can offer is video because you're already, uh, you already, as it says, you already stand lighting, aperture, composition, depth of field, so on. You know how the camera works. You know how the lenses work. You're already there. Okay, don't be worried about the fact that it's a moving image camera. It's still a box that captures light. And if you know how to operate a stills camera in manual, it should be a relatively straightforward process. Because a lot of because when I shoot video, it's manual. When I stream, I'm streaming. My settings are my exposure is all in manual. I don't want it to change. So with all that said, you're already there. All right. Um, all right, so that's that part. Let me go on over here. Boy, what a rant, right? What a rant. Okay, I'm setting up something else over in the back end. Let's check out some of these here. Comments. Um, 
Hey, thanks, Ken Cruck Gaming. Graphics on fleek. Hey, bro, thank you very much. Really appreciate that. You know, I spend a lot of time designing these corny graphics, so I'm glad it's appreciated. Uh, YouTube is king. Absolutely, Mark. Yes, it is. That's why I don't go on Twitch. I'm not really like, I don't think I do. My thing wouldn't work on Twitch, really. I don't game, and I'm not like a hot 17-year-old people like looking at in a bikini. So with all that said, Twitch is not going to be for me. And um, Instagram Live is cool, but really, I've noticed that me on YouTube is the perfect platform for photographers to connect with other photographers, and um, I still believe in horizontal content, okay? So uh, vertical is great, but this is where you get the juice with the horizontal. Um, I'm working on my photography, been focused on video, but photography is helping hella with my framing. Help? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think uh, Randy Savage thinks so, too. Oh, yeah. So he agrees with you. He agrees. Yes. Um, obviously, I've been focused on photography, but it's becoming more apparent that I stretch my limits to video. Honestly, brands have reached out to me more because I've gotten into video. So that benefited me right there. Um, if I just talk about still images and stuff like that, yeah, I mean, I still get relationships, but because of video, now I could talk about lights, different kind of lights, especially constant LED lights. I could talk about um, other accessories like like this here. If I only talked about photography, that you know, talking about the gimbal, talking about this, let me see if this thing, it doesn't want to see me. It sees my eyes. But nonetheless, the um, it would, uh, this, I wouldn't be talking about this product at all, which is a great on-the-go vlogging video um camera right the pocket two so uh oh spaz it out so with all that said yes now i am more focused on video so focused that uh it's benefited me to the point where i want to share the benefits of shooting video with you and that's why i'm having my webinar okay for those who shoot nikon cameras we got malcolm in here hello come on now <laughs> Everybody go check out Malcolm Walker's uh, YouTube channel. He goes live Monday evenings. And when he does, he's the one to talk about Sony. So if all of you Sony fanboys, all one of you that might be on my uh, live stream, uh, check out his channel. Great channel. And he reviews a lot of Sony stuff. So go check out his channel. All right. I was on there on, on Monday ranting about, I forgot what I was talking about, but we were ranting. All right. Ryan in the house. What's going on, everybody? Hey, what's going on? Yeah. Welcome, Ryan. I, I I think this may be my first time seeing you on my stream, but I welcome you, and you are. That is awesome, man. I'm, you're more than welcome to join us every week by smashing that sub, right? Smash the sub, folks. Come on now. And also, ring that bell icon. Come on now. You already know what to do, folks. Don't act like you don't. Make sure you smash. You know what? Um, last time I checked, everybody, the like button is free. Okay? That's it. The like button is free. But it helps. It helps the channel. Believe it or not. Um, make video horizontal again. Wow. Yes, right? I know. But you know what? These companies, they want to go, they want vertical. They push the vertical, man. I'm telling you, I have 15 people watching me right now. I'd have an easy 30 if I did my live stream vertical. That's the sad part, Mark. That's that's just the way it is. Uh, your work is over the top, Robert. Well, John Ishii coming from him means a lot. Come on. Yeah. Thank you, John, man. Thank you so much. And uh, let me see if I have another. Uh, let me see if I have something awesome. Oh, yeah. Here we go. We got a macho man. Come on. Oh, yeah. For John Ishii. And John, I, I voted twice for your wife. Okay, don't let the judges know. I voted twice for your wife's photo. So tell her I said phenomenal work. I love seeing photojournalistic portraiture. That was really beautiful stuff there. Um, I have my fingers crossed for open gate on that Z8. Imagine. Ooh, what would it be like? Open gate, 8K on the Nikon Z8 or Z9. Wow, that'd 
that would be phenomenal, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. That would be amazing. Um, ironically, Lumix has had open gate since the GH5, at least. I know the GH6 has it. Uh, Lumix S5 uh, open gate. S5 Mark II has it in the S1H. So, yeah, like the tech, I say that just because the technology is available. So, come on, Nikon, watch the Z6 be open gate at 6K. That'd be, that'd be pretty impressive. I'm not going to lie. That'd be pretty awesome. Um, instant vertical. Yeah, that's why I like open gate. You're shooting once to get both perspectives. That's fantastic. Pies in the house. Come on now. Hey, Pi, I actually had to DM you. I got to DM you. Uh, Derek and I want to do something. So look out for your DM. I'll DM you afterwards of, from the stream, okay? So we'll get something cracking. Uh, Ryan says, I'm subscribed. My friend RBJ put me on to your channel. We were at WPPI. Come on, everybody. Give him a round of applause. Man, Ryan, that's awesome. Yeah, it's funny, uh, RBJ, like we, we've been uh, connecting back and forth for quite some time, and we finally met face-to-face -face at WPPI. That's why, that's one of the great uh, great reasons of attending WPPI is that we have a large community here in photography, and a lot of times we never get to see each other face-to-face, -face, like in the real world. And so going to these events, that uh, is, is a great way to finally bump into each other. So hopefully, Ryan, next year, I'll see you. Even though they're going to be at the El Rio Hotel, I'll see you then. Make sure we get a selfie, man. All right? Uh, let's go ahead and turn off this bad boy right here. And uh, let me see. Oh, we got this going on. All right. So let's see. Check the next comment. Ma oh, come on, Malcolm. You already know. Oh. Hit that like, everybody. And I do have a free newsletter. So if you head on over to my description section, sign up for a newsletter. It's just an email. And I'll keep you posted on the webinars, uh, videos, tips, tricks, and everything in between if you want to stay posted. And that is one of the sure best ways for me to stay in constant contact with all of you outside of my YouTube channel because you never know where these social channels will go. With the newsletter, I can always stay directly connected with all of you. Luke says, hey, Robert. Hey, man. Thank you for tuning in. Yeah. Thank you very much for stopping by. And Mark says, I'm not into reels or shorts, uh, but you got to do it. I know. I know. It's a necessary evil. That's the problem. It, it really, really is. I, I have to do it. What I do is I mix it up. I'll post a few photos, you know, post my couple posts, maybe still images, another one, and then I'll throw in one vertical video. So I try to do at least like two to three a week, and that that's fine, you know? Um, John says, thank you so much. Yes, you're welcome. Yeah, man, I, I did it on my phone, then I did it on my desktop, and it allowed me to submit twice. So, hey, there we go. You know what I mean? It is what it is. It is what it is. All right. So let's turn this bad boy off. Yes. As I said, please sign up for my free newsletter. It is right there in the description section and uh, be much appreciated. I am planning right now. As a matter of fact, I already planned it. I just didn't post it yet. But at the top of April, I will be hosting a free photo walk for everyone signed up to my newsletter. That's right. <laughs> A free photo walk. You get to hang out with me for a couple hours. We're going to be doing a great, a nice, nice uh, walk slash hike. Nothing too tremendous. In the past, I used to do, uh, I did a 12-mile hike, and I killed some people on those. So I won't be doing that. This will be a very cool walk with tons of scenery for us to shoot and talk about photography. But it's only available to those who are signed up to my newsletter. Okay, because that's how you're going to get the address, the time, and the date, and everything else. Or is, uh, you're going to get a, an exclusive email when it happens, and then you're invited. It's totally free. Come hang out with me. Hang out with the other people you see here on this, uh, on this live stream and everything else. So hopefully you go do that. Sign up to my newsletter. Um, I got a job shooting Gibson guitars in collab with Fujifilm. I would love to pass you the job. Nervous. 
Hey, I'm not sure who you're talking to, John, but that sounds pretty awesome. That sounds really, really awesome, man. And then, uh, oh, we got Martin Manila in the house. My Filipino brethren over there, he's always tuning in. I always appreciate it. Thank you so much, Martin. I really do. Uh, Mark says, John, that's awesome. I've been playing Gibsons for, oh, well, you know what, Mark? It sounds like he's talking to you, man. Pick that up. Pick that up. You know, I, um, there was a time I was teaching myself to play drums and I got like private lessons and stuff. Guitar, I could, I, I think it's because what kept me from guitar is that the first guitar I tried was like a bass and my fingers were super small and I couldn't grip it really well and the strings were thicker and I was like, it just turned me off. But drums, I love the drums. So specifically jazz drumming. I think a jazz drummer is just freaking crazy. It's amazing. So, but anyway, that's a little side note right there. Um, let's get to the next thing, okay? Before I, in a couple minutes, I'm gonna open up the line, everybody. I'm gonna open up the line. We can talk more about video. All right. So let's get to this first thing here. All right. Another a few reasons why photographers should get into video. All right, here we go. Seven reasons why. All photographers should learn video. Look, this is 2018, and it's still relevant. Trust, trust and believe it. First is to stay on a trends, right? You can see here they're using a um, a time lapse video. Great for social media posts, that's for sure. Uh, it's become a huge trend in, in social media, absolutely, and for photographers and clients. Right. People expect video. They want video. Recently, I shot a fashion show and they were even though we were signing up to be photographers for the event, they all requested, hey, send us video as well. So it's like people expect both, as I mentioned earlier. And yes, yeah, staying on top of the trend, because that means that could be you being attractive to the next potential client. And it doesn't hurt for self promoting yourself. Right. Like Instagram, and again, being a part of trend means this Instagram algorithm. This is how you can help win against that, right? Because if you're just shooting stills, I already know uh, longer form content, meaning like over the 60 seconds, is getting very popular. TikTok right now is going to be rolling out horizontal video in TikTok as well. That the uh, I mean, and also. Um, it's been um, proven that video that's longer than a minute or three minutes, I believe, um, is actually more popular than the short versions. People stay on longer. They watch the whole thing. They become more engaged. They're more invested in watching that longer form. So understanding these things can help you to stay a part of the trend to at least better self-promote yourself or offering these kind of knowledge and services to your potential client. Hey, and also it challenges you, right? Now, instead of worrying about still images, exposure, composition, and stuff like that, now you have to worry about motion. You have to worry about um, uh, sound is another huge thing. So these add a whole nother element uh, to your uh, content creation, right? On top of just still images. But you're halfway there because you're a photographer. So, right, creating videos will challenge you the way you see the world as you move from a static to a more dynamic perspective. This will push you to reinvent, here it goes, reinvent how you plan every scene and compose your shot. You will also find yourself planning sessions in a whole new manner. And even post-processing the footage will take a newfound knowledge. Okay? This will also, learning video will help you improve your technical skills. One obvious way is just how to better use your uh how to better use your still camera, right? Learning video. As I mentioned earlier, when you buy this camera, half of it is video. I mean, it clearly says so because we see the switch right here, right? Let me see this. Let me see. There we go. We see the switch right there, and it's photos and video. So if you're just buying this big old camera for just stills, you're kind of wasting your money. I mean, maybe a lot because this autofocus is pretty remarkable. But what I'm saying is you're you're also you're 
half the value really is in the video. Otherwise, they would just they wouldn't need to throw an 8K and raw capability and log and everything else in here if if the value wasn't there. But it's there. Okay. So it helps you to better not only learn how to use your camera, but also how to pull off high quality video and thus selling it, hopefully. Okay. These capabilities can gain uh, gain from shooting videos are not limited to creativity. Once you start using your gear for new purposes, you'll discover many new features that you paid that you haven't paid attention to before. You will also take your exist existing technical skills to the next level as you see them applied to a whole new environment. Yeah, you'll think of lighting. That's the thing for me. I've become more technical and more, I don't know, picky when it comes to lighting my scene when it because of video. There's less room for error. You could really push and pull way more in still images, right? Because it's one frame. Then um, you came with video. On average, you know, we're talking about 10, 10 and 12 bit here. You'd have to get like a red camera to shoot somewhere 14, 16 bit, but I, I don't have the bank for that. So I could get 12, I'm getting 12 bit out of this, but yet your photos, you know, you get 14 and whatever you're getting out of this thing. So, so with all that said, you have to be more technical to get it right in camera. You have less latitude. The more annoying too. Uh, and if you don't know how to color grade correctly, you're going to mess up your footage. So just getting it right in camera is really a good skill to know and to have. I know, fix it in post, but that's not always the case, especially with video. Uh, you can share your expertise. One of the biggest opportunities on the internet offers photographers the ability to become experts in their field, sharing your knowledge, right? So, and the best way to sh share the knowledge, you guessed it, is video, right? So that's kind of like with, in my case, I've, 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 I've done enough where I was like, you know what, this is too, too beneficial for photographers to just keep to myself. I have to share it with all of you so that you can make the conscious decision on whether I'm adding video to your repertoire or not, or at least in the being able to better self promote yourself. Also, it enhances your portfolio. Clients like to see that you can do more than just one thing a lot of the time. Yeah, clients make a wedding for a wedding client may go to my website for photography, but a lot of times, more than ever, the past two years, they say, "Oh, do you do do you do video too?" Because as I mentioned earlier, they expect you to do both. Okay, and then my I can say, "Yes, I do." Well, write this way, write to my portfolio. I have a video up or two, or in your case, you know, however you feel, how many you feel. And then you can prove your point whether you do both or not. Now, whether they just hire you for one of those services, but at least having that ability to say, hey, here's an example of my work. There you go. And adding some visual, uh, some motion to your portfolio is nice too, right? So you have the photos and a little bit of motion to it. That's why, again, Instagram, TikTok, and so forth is not just purely still or video. You can do both now. You know, you can post carousel, a carousel right uh of still images in tiktok now now they wouldn't have done it if they didn't deem it valuable so therefore you can post videos and still images on tiktok so clearly there's a need and an enjoyment for both mediums here's another obvious one the more you know the more you're able to offer oh i like that i like let's do that again the more you know the more you're able to offer. Expanding your photography services page will allow you to cater to a wider audience and grow your customer base. Come on. Because because of what I just said, right? They, they expect you to do both. Why would you want to give away a little piece of that pie? If you just do photography and then now you have to outsource it or um, worse comes to worse, you have to refer somebody else completely take care of it, then that sucks, right? Me at the worst comes to worst, I'll at least hire somebody. I'll manage the entire project. More than likely, I'm going to edit it depending on the cost and I'll take a piece off the top, right? But if you have to give it completely to somebody else, because all you do is video, then you, you may come off as less valuable for that client. 
And if that photographer does both, they may just end up saying, hey, thank you, thank you, you know, thanks for your time. And they'll go with that other photographer that can do both. What I did at first is I would team up with a videographer I knew, understand their rate, add my service fee on top of it, and then I could at least lock in that client for both, even if I wasn't doing a video, but I would manage the project overall. And that's how I would keep a couple of clients uh, from going somewhere else. So yeah, offering more. And when you offer more, you're actually doing this crazy thing called adding more value to your client's experience with working with you. Oh, he's great. He did this. He did that. And then he also made recommendations. and Because one thing you have to do as photographers is upsell. No one's buying your dang negatives anymore. No one cares. You got to learn to upsell. The art of up, that should be a video. The art of upselling couldn't be the, it is absolutely the most valuable skill that you can learn as an entrepreneur. You want to make sure that you, per customer, you're getting the most out of them, right? When I log into my Square account, it tells me, oh, you've had so many clients and this is your average per client. You want to get the most out of them. I just recently had a client that um, it turned into a $1,000 family photo session, okay? $1,000 for two hours of my time. It started off as a one-hour client. It dragged on to two hours. They bought this. I upselled more. Boom, bada, bang, $1,000 for that one client. And it was just family portraits. It wasn't anything extremely, like, I didn't have to go overboard or nothing. I brought one flash, you know, a couple of lenses, Z9. We had a great time. And, but I just upsell because I showed the value. They saw the value in the work. They saw the client. And, and then I said, hey, how about this? How about that? Here's what I offer. Afterwards, I continue to sell until it's done. And video is going to just help you to add more uh, arrows in your quiver to offer them later and upsell. Oh, you know what? I shot your thing, but you know what? I can make you five vertical videos out of that video and uh, for this extra fee. How's that sound? And you could post it to your TikTok. People will eat that crap up all day, especially when they don't have to do the editing. So just think about it. Offer more. It's okay. On, the, on, on top of that, including video as part of your service offering will give you a significant advantage over other photographers. Imagine you're able to do that. You're giving them this. You're giving them vertical videos. You're giving them long-form video. You're giving them some stills, too. Man, I'm telling you, you'd be a one-man branding content machine. You can offer that to small businesses, medium-sized businesses, large businesses, law firms, or whatever, and you can still shoot your weddings and everything else, okay? Okay, and last but not least, why not? Okay, you already have a, as we said earlier, you're already halfway there. You already have the gear and a passion for capturing personal view of the world. So why not give video a shot? Come on now. All right, that's enough. <laughs> that's enough. Hey, everybody, let me know how my video feed is if, uh, the latency, I've been trying to really work on that. And also, how does my audio sync? Something happened in my last video. I don't know what it was, but um, let me know how my audio and my video is working with me. Please let me know. Okay. Uh, where were we last? Uh, Cooley says, would love to get into video, but would not even know how to start. Well, you know, and that, honestly, I think a lot of people are in, you know, in your shoes, quite honestly. They they feel the same way. It, they want to get into it. They understand there's value to it, but it's it's intimidating. It can be, okay? But it's a lot less intimidating than you think, all right? really is. You might want to take my um, recording video with Nikon uh, webinar. Because I'm going to go through the basics. We're not going to get really professional and all this other stuff. We're going to go through the basics. We're going to start from the ground up and build from there, depending on how much time we got. We're going to talk about audio. We're going to talk about exposure. We're going to be talking about uh, video formats and file types and all this other jazz. And that might help you to be less uh, intimidated by the process of video. All right. Anyway, just an idea.
Pokey. Okay, Malcolm. All right. Oh, hey, he said, <laughs> no worries, Malcolm. All right, no worries, man. I was like, what the heck is he talking about? Um, who's going to nab? Oh boy, I wish I could. I wish I could. I went to WPPI and now I'm I'm set to go to a big film festival in Miami in June. So all my money's going there. And I pray and I'm praying to the gods above that I could get a plenum lens by the end of the year. So my money's tapped, brother. But it does sound amazing. Are you going? Uh, Malcolm, Cooley, just buy a Sony and video will happen easily. Well, you know what? You might be right about that, okay? You might be right. That all focus is pretty awesome. It makes things much easier. Uh, I do all of my shorts and reels right from the Z8 now. Wow, that's beast. That's fantastic, man. Yeah. Way to go, Mark. Uh, Pi says, audio is good. Awesome. Thank you very much. And Mark says, the feed looks great. Well, let me give myself a round of applause. Come on. Yeah. Th thank me very much. Let me stop. Um, let's see here. And Pi says, YouTube University, Cooley. Lots of info on how to get started with video. Absolutely, Pi. And you know what? I still watch tons of content about um, lighting, cinematic lighting, uh, lighting. Honestly, lighting is like when you get into video, lighting is the, I know in photography we talk about it, but we could cheat so much, right? Fix it in post. It, it, there's so much ways you can, I don't know what to say cheat, but you can work around things, right? If an image is totally blown out, maybe turning it black and white. And like, there's all sorts of cheap ways to get around the mistakes. Video doesn't give you that much as much latitude as still images. So lighting, 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 and lighting is your best friend for sure in video. And it adds so much more, um, could add drama, but it adds so much more character. When you understand how to properly light your subject and or your scene, it really matters on an nth degree. Like when we shoot photo photography, I've met so many photographers that only shoot with natural ambient lighting. And that's great. If it works for you, mazel tov. I'm not, go for it. I'm all for it. But video, you must understand lighting to the nth degree, right? You need ND filters. You need uh, reflectors sometimes. You need to understand how light bounces and hits yourself i mean it's way more technical but yet you become way more empowered photographer going through video because of all the technicals you have to uh over you have to understand to overcome when you're shooting video and then you come back to photography you're like you're looking at it like a scientist almost so that's my thing man um Snap Bridges life. Oh. Are you are you making fun of Snap Bridge? You know what? My, uh, my future video is on Snap Bridge because of the latest firmware update. And um, I like Snap Bridge. It's improved. I remember Snap Bridge when I had the D500, 750. It was horrendous. Absolutely horrible, unreliable, and pretty much I just forgot all about it. But when I got the Z9, and all these later higher end Nikon cameras, I really enjoyed it. I use it all the time. I use it for my Nikon ZF all the time, actually. And I like using the auto upload mode. And when I get it going via Bluetooth, it works really, really well. So the Wi Fi, you know, you got to practice that. But we're going to do a whole test. I'm going to show you a video on SnapBridge and we're going to go over that. Trust and believe it. Um, Cooley says, if you were to start over, what kind of system would you get? Well, now that I have, it's hard, it, it's hard to answer that wholeheartedly because I have the Z8 and the Z9, and I know what I could do with the Z8 and Z9, and I have all the, I'm not going to lie, I, I, I'm happy with Nikon, I really am, I have zero complaints. My one complaint is, um, I don't have that plenum lens, hey oh, you know, so... 
That might be my own complaint. And the other complaint is this, which all of you don't care about. I like having a flip screen. Like these screens are great, the articulating screens, but I need a flip screen for video. That's just me. You know, I like a flip screen, but I'm probably the one person <laughs> that likes it. Uh, okay, so King Krug says he would go, go red or air, uh, an airy. Uh, I would go with red, technically. I like red. I don't know why I like red. I like red before Nikon bought it. I like them even more. I was already looking at the Komodo 6, the 6K, and um, that once you max it out with the production kit, it's like $15,000. I was looking at that one, quite honestly. Um, but Cooley, were you talking about photography or video system? That That's probably might help us out. Uh, but a better price proposition is the Nikon Z9 and 8. It is, but the dip rate, the dip, dip, bit rate, um, global shutter capability, if you could afford that red, um, color science, okay? The red is pretty freaking amazing, right? Come on, man. Uh, that red, it's hard to beat it. But for consumer, for the price, see, this is five and a half thousand dollars. And now, what did I say? 15 grand for one of their lower end reds, which I wouldn't really call lower end. It's just the least expensive one of the bunch. The Komodo, you know, it's $15,000 if you want to monitor and some basic stuff in a top handle. Um, snappage on my phone is great to do. Quick reels on Z8. Film in 1080 since socials down, uh, downgrade your quality anyway. You're absolutely right. That it, and you know what? But the quality of your reels looks stupendous when you're shooting with an actual camera. So, exactly. See, this is a great way when we're talking about using video to self promote yourself. Your cameras can do it, and now just just create those same reels you would have done with your phone, and um, leave your phone for actually answering calls and text messaging, and then uh, your your reels look like a boss because you just shot in 10K, you shot in 4K, but with the an actual uh with a lens that actually blows out your background optically uh flip screens are so flimsy plus you mentioned need a seven five to nail police yes you do but but here's the thing king when you put a v-mount battery right here how do you get to your menu if you have an actual rig go check out my videos with the rig how do you get to your menu? You now you have to have a monitor. Yes, absolutely. But I like to get to my menu if I don't have a touch screen and it doesn't let me get to my menu system. When you do your flip screen and you flip this out, you could press your V mount battery up to this, okay? And still have access to the menu system to your touch screen. Trust what I'm saying. It's clutch. That's why a lot of cinema cameras, a lot of cinema cameras have their screen on the side, not the back, because that's where the batteries go. They have it on the side so you can still get to your menu system. So that's why I would like that. If you're giving me 8K and all this other stuff, I'd like to still be able to have access to the screen when I have my V-mount battery pressed against the back. So it doesn't need to be made out of titanium i just need to be able to get to my menu i'm not hanging or cliffhanging from it <laughs> uh mark says what's the difference between cine lenses and photography lenses you know what go check out my um my wppi video where i visit the sigma booth that is literally the first question i asked sigma because sigma makes cine lenses i asked them and they give me a great rundown on some differences between the two okay and um, maybe I'll do a quick video about that just to help break it down and introduce that difference. That's a great question. Let me uh, write that down, actually. Uh, cine versus still lenses. Okay. Lenses. So, Mark, watch, uh, make sure you, you, you smash that bell. I'm, I'll do a video on that. If you don't go see the video, okay, 
It says Sigma booth uh, at WPPI. And then I'm literally talking to Sigma about that very question because uh, cause that whole video was about Sigma Cine lenses. So that should help you out, hopefully. And then we have uh, Chris. Chris says, hey, first of all, Chris, thanks for tuning in. Um, thoughts on Nikon Capture and X 2.0 for tethering? Gosh, this will be the one time I'm not a wholehearted, fully sold on Nikon Capture. I mean, Nikon software or something. Uh, I tend, me, like when I shoot tethered, I honestly, I like Capture One. Sorry to say it. <laughs> Capture One's got me. That's the way it is. All right. Uh, it's super reliable. I tend to not like things that are proprietary. Because then you're like, you're stuck in this bottleneck, right? The only company that seemed to be really, really great at proprietary or sticking in their ecosystem is Apple, right? But I've noticed, <clears throat> like, the reason why I couldn't stream directly from Panasonic USB-C to my Mac was because Panasonic's firmware didn't update to keep up with the latest update of Mac and then they didn't communicate and then my camera became useless and wasn't recognized as a webcam and it became this whole kerfuffle. But as soon as I got out of that ecosystem and just got a, 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 a capture card, it worked perfectly. So I don't, I don't know about the Nikon capture NX 2.0 tethering and all this stuff and keeping it in there because guess what? I do all my heavy lifting in Lightroom and Photoshop and even, even capture one, you could export, you could edit in Capture One and, and, and export it to Photoshop. So even they are kind of in that Adobe situation. So with all that said, my workflow, it, it, it will actually add more, um, uh, it would decrease the efficiency of my workflow if I use that software. So that's why, first of all, I don't have much experience in it. So that's one thing I want to be honest. But secondly, why I haven't even looked into it. Uh, Capture One would increase my workflow. It's extremely reliable. It handles raw files really freaking awesome. And I'm sure Nikon Capture does too. But it's like, it's just, it, it, it just, it just doesn't, it doesn't slow me down. And I don't want it to. No, regardless of what camera system I'm using, I want one software to rule them all. And Capture One is, is that one. So that's my opinion. Um, I have the OG Komodo. I was looking at the Raptor. I know that Raptor X, boy, I was looking at that thing too. And unfortunately, my pocket smacked me in my face. And what are you doing? But that Raptor X is amazing. 8K global shutter. Yowzes. But I will wait because I prefer Z mount over RF. Global shutter for video is hard to explain. You must experience it. Hey, man. King, let me tell you, I'm right there with you. Um, my pockets aren't. That's why the 6K Komodo is more realistic, you know? Um, but, hey, I think once you're in the red system, it's game time. You know what I mean? Um, I know you have the OG Komodo, you know? And that still is, like, a, a beautiful performing cinema camera. And uh, I'm the same way. I wanted to see, I want to see a Z-mount. They could easily do it. This is not rocket science. That would be... That would, I'm not going to lie, I would seriously start putting away some money to get me a red camera if they just have a Z-mount option. Uh, cine lenses have a longer throw for focus. They measure light and T-stops, which is more accurate than photo lenses of F-stops and several other differences. Absolutely. So, like, um, Mark, so F-stops is what we use here, but F-stops are an estimated value um an estimated value of how much light goes through your lens and hits that sensor but if you get a 2.8 in a nikon and 2.8 in a canon it might be a little different of how much light goes through that's why f stops aren't really they're not used in cinema they're not accurate t stops are actual accurate numerical like scientific proven how much light goes through that lens. So when I change my lens, that same amount of light is what's going to hit that sensor. 
That's why T-stops are way more accurate. That's why filmmakers use T lenses with T-stops or cine lenses. Way more accurate. Also, the focus throw. He says it's a longer focus throw. Reason why you want a longer focus throw is because a lot of times we're pushing and pulling our focus manually. And what that's going to do is it's going to give us a lot more accuracy. Okay. Let's just say hypothetically, I'm going to throw a stupid number out there. You have 360 degrees around your lens barrel. And you have, let's say, 224 degrees. I'm just throwing out a number. 224 degrees of it of a focus throw. So that means you can really fine tune that focus exactly where you want it. In our lenses, it might be a hundred. I'm just throwing you a number. So, cause you want quick, you don't want act, you want accurate and precision. That's what the longer focus throw is going to give you that precision, but your lens and your still cameras, you want quick to react to the autofocus. Right, not manual focus, autofocus. So you want snappy, snappy, snappy. So it's going to be a shorter focus throw to quickly get you there. Okay, just to put it stupid and simply. And Ken Cruck, I'm sure you can type in something if you want. And if I said something wrong, feel free to chime in, brother. Chris, I was on the fence between the two. Thanks, and you're most welcome, brother. Okay. <laughs> So, but anywho, let me just take a swig of this, everybody. Mm. All right, I got I got like about a, another half hour left. If anybody wants to jump on, talk to Smack about video, and feel free. Let me send you the link. Awesome. Thank you, King. You're 100%. Good explanation. Thank you, man. I'm just saying. And let me tell you, folks, I've learned this by... Messing up. Hello. Okay. That's the reality. I learned this by messing up. I've learned everything you've seen me done for good or for worse. I'm not saying I'm the best at all. I learned five months, not even a full semester at Academy of Art Photography. And then by messing up for years, messing up, trial and error, research, try it again, research, try it again. Try it again. That's how you're going to learn. I We all start at zero. Let me say it again. We all start at zero. Okay? But I want it to get better. If you have the, if you have the will and the determination to get better, you will. Because you're going to want to go research. You're going to want to go listen to people. You're going to want to attend seminars or whatever the case may be. Or just be around people who know more than you. And you will pick it up. And then you'll try it out. And then you'll get better. Um, need to link up again. Yes, absolutely, man. I'm going to be doing a photo walk, Mark. Like I said, like I said, come, um, if you sign up to my, uh, free newsletter, anyone who signed up to my free news, free newsletter will get notified about my upcoming free photo walk. Come on now. Yeah. That, that, I mean, that's that's amazing. That's good stuff. A free photo walk. You get to hang out with me. See this shirt that you always see. I have multiple of them. So if anybody thinks I don't have more than one shirt, you're sadly mistaken. All right. But you come hang out with me. We talk photography. We talk camera. We talk lenses. We talk about whatever. Come on. So sign up to my free newsletter work and uh, you'll be notified too. Come on. All right. Anyway. Um, let's get back to the comments. Oh, wow. Wayne, morning all. Just came across the stream. Dang, what's up, Wayne? Thank you for tuning in. Really do appreciate it. All right, here it is. Uh, join the panel. All right, I only have about a half hour left, but join the panel. Whoever wants to jump on in. Okay, I just posted the, there we go. I just posted the link. Uh, I came, I came from photography and just like you, I learned from a whole lot of mistakes, which involves buying the wrong gear, man. I, uh, I so know what you, mean. I know what you mean, man. I have so much crap. I'm like, why did I get this BS? That's why I, I'm so determined to share my mistakes. I have no problem. I make mistakes every day of this game. Let me tell you. And Sharing with all of you humbles me because I'm like, you know, I'm just like all of you. There's nothing special about what I do. 
And um, it's just that I'm sharing it with you. I'm willing to admit it. And I'm still going through the process. I want to get better, quite honestly. Some of you inspire me. I see some of your posts, right? I was talking to R RBJ, and I'm like, bro, I see you out there with his uh, DJI Pocket 3 camera. I was like, you know what? Let me get this thing. You know what? I see what he's doing over there with that. Um, so absolutely, we are all sitting around on some gear we shouldn't have got. Only if. All right, we have... A friendly intruder in the house. Come on now, let's give a round of applause for Coolies in the house. Yeah. I have to admit, though, I am huh? getting. The, I have to admit, I'm getting the itch to start doing more video stuff. Whoa, hold on, everybody. Well, we may be hit by lightning pretty soon. I don't know, but uh, wow, <laughs> that's cr oh. You know what? Um, but I think I mentioned that mentioned this last week. I was like, when I was at WPPI, I yeah. got into doing Nikon video because I shot with the ZF. I was like, uh -huh. I was pretty impressed with it. And sure enough, I trust me, I feel you. Now that it, I'm doing webcam with the Nikon Z8. Yeah. And you know, Cooley, you've been around on my stream for a long time. And I've been doing Panasonic, right? Yeah. And here I am with shooting with the Z8, okay? It's a new world, brother. It's a new world. Uh, we have someone new coming on the live stream, okay? Let's give a big old shout out to Brother Mark. Come on now. What's good? What's good? What's good? Can you hear me? Yes, hear sir. Me? All right. All right. Long time no see since uh, we've seen you in the mic days, mic I camera know. days. I know. Oh my gosh. It's been a minute. I, to be honest, I'm just jumping on, just jump on. I know someone else down there, but I don't. I'm excited about video since the announcement. Before, I don't think I was into video. Yeah. yeah. Not, not that I wasn't. Uh, I guess I just didn't really. I bought the Z8 and I was like, okay, it's there for, for video and whatnot. But after I heard the announcement, it, it sparked a fire for me. Like, you know what? Since this is something that they're invested in, and you've been saying it for a while. Thank you. Um, you know, it's something I should look into it, and especially with like from from reading about the codex, like you said, when you get excited about stuff, you want to learn about it. From hearing about the codex and how it's easier or how it's really good to edit, I started to want to look into it. And then also, I started noticing more people were asking me not only about photography but about videography with it. So it's like, <laughs> okay, well, shoot, you're gonna have to learn how to do a little bit of both. Um, like in today's society, we got to be a renaissance man, That's you know. Right. In, in photography and and just in, in a lot of in a lot of arts, you know. So absolutely. See, you're proving the point I've been I've been I feel like Paul Revere. I really do. Not to be bright. <laughs> yeah, but the like, video's you know, coming, right? The, the video's video. coming. The video's coming. <laughs> the video's coming. And yeah. I've been saying it last year. I made videos. I believe Cooley may have been on some streams. I was like, you get into video. Photography alone will no longer cut it. And yeah. um I mean, uh, honestly yeah. I'm not doing bad photographically. I'm doing a lot of high school seniors. I'm doing oh. all that stuff. Uh, a lot of weddings. I, 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 I try to get away from weddings, but it just seems like I even double my prices and they still want me to do them. Damn. You know, which is, I guess, a bad, not a bad problem to have. That's right. But I mean, I don't know. I'm, uh, well, yeah. hey, like I said, it, it, it's not a mandatory thing. It's just a, it's a suggestion. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, hold on. Let me. We have another intruder. Uh -oh. Come on now. Uh -oh. Let's give a round of applause yeah, to this uh, this well seasoned uh, intruder. We got Wayne in the house. Yeah, we're gonna give him the jazz intro. We're gonna give him the jazz. Hey, hey. Morning, morning, everyone. How's it going, Wayne? Not bad. Can you hear me well? Oh yeah, you we sound good. Okay. So yeah, we're talking video. I know you have something to say. Well, you know, I missed some, a lot of what you were um, talking about. I was trying to go back, but I was like, whoa, a second. This has been over hours. It's a lot of stuff to catch up. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about um, basically the impact of video, especially, mm -hmm. obviously, we have Nikon coming, you know, hitting the home run, buying buying red. Uh, we've seen the late, all the latest firmware updates lately, the 2.0, the uh, the Z8, the 4, and the 5.0 from Nikon. They're going heavy, hard, and improving in video. So clearly, yeah. and the ZF is actually really good with video. So with all that said, that's just letting us know where the direction is for Nikon, and everybody else is also heavy in video. So clearly, us photographers, I, 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 I'm like, if we don't want to get left by the wayside, we should dabble in video, at least to self-promote oh. yourself. 
Yeah, that, and I think that's a, I think that a lot of people don't do because on the photography side, most of us have been comfortable shooting that way. I can say myself when I started doing YouTube, I bought a Panasonic camcorder. I started with a Panasonic camcorder, and then wow. I started getting used to the Z6 II, and then moved to Sony, and now back to Nikon. And as you mentioned, the firmware 2.0 for the Z8. You know, the last couple of videos that we'll be doing on like ice lenses. I've been utilizing like the low two when I record outside because uh -huh. of your ISO 800 to record log, you get some grain and some noise when you're doing the edit. And I was like, ooh, you know, we don't have dual gain ISO on our sensor, but Nikon has done something to allow us now to record at a lower level and get clean images. So yeah, and I'm sure you guys are seeing on YouTube right now, there's other content creators that we've never seen shot Nikon before are moving over to Nikon to utilize the sensor because you know the sensor has a good dynamic range and it does a lot of good things it just hasn't okay. been tweaked for video use but i think now with acquiring red they may change things around and be that video side totally i can see them saying okay uh they make a more consumer or price consumer friendly red i don't see yeah. why they couldn't um and hell, if they just add a Z mount, I can see people buying it <laughs> and oh, yeah. right. And yeah. grabbing some of that technology and color science and adding it to a higher end flagship Z camera. Yep. Right. Cause that's the thing I'm like, is the color science <laughs> and, the, and the bit rates that the red could do. Ooh. Anyway, let me calm down. But, um, <laughs> It only could be a good uh, that's why i was so excited i was like oh my god i i was so excited on that floor when that happened and that just again just proves the point that video is the future now i'm not saying photography is alone but you must incorporate it and that's why like what i said earlier if you're a new photographer coolie you have some you have some time in a game you know what i mean yeah. but if you're new right now getting in you're like hey i want to make this at least a serious part-time passion you must incorporate video. It's not even a question because you'll never. In, I'd grab me a couple of Z9s, oh. four or five lenses, and uh, you could take care of it. any 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 uh, situation. Here's yeah. because your rates will not keep up with inflation. Let me say that again, everybody. Your rates will not keep up with inflation. Think about that. You could only raise your rates so much so fast before you price yourself out. Video is a great way that people still see the perceived value of video. They still say, hey, I can't do that. Can you do that for me? Oh, that mm -hmm. no wonder it costs that much. They see why it costs. These, what is it? This here is killing the photography game. That and AI. Yeah. <laughs> Did I ever tell you a story when I was working for the Post Tribune? Mm -hmm. And what had happened was I ha was working on an assignment, fell on the ice, bulged one disc, fragmented another disc, okay? So, but what happened was while I was on Workman's Comp, the newspaper went and basically fired all the photographers for the newspaper. Wow. Ooh. And you know what they handed the writers after that? What? iPhones. Candles. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, hold on. There you go. Yeah. Wow. Well, see, and uh, hold on. We got a few comments. Let's get some of these here comments in there. What's up, Gucci LL Cooley P? Wow. Look at, you got a whole nickname. Okay. You know uh, what my nickname in high school was? What's that? Coolio. Was it really? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm guessing you did. Numbers, I'm, but. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, different hairstyle, I'm sure. Uh, now, oh, Mark, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> we got Money Mark in the house, and then we also got to learn. Oh, here we got Hero Shots. Hello, Hero. <laughs> got to learn about video these days because it's where the money is right now. Absolutely, man, it really is. I, I hate right. Uh, Mark, tell me, tell me about your situation with video and photography and dealing with clients. Did, didn't you say something earlier about? Oh yeah, and like I have, I have a lot of people that are now asking me to like not only do photography but do video as well. And uh, I wanted to actually throw a little more background. Originally, I started off wanting to do video. I had a G eighty five, and I was doing vlogging of my process of uh, getting the kidney transplant. I had I was on kidney failure, 
And I just, I, I, I ended up not liking it because I was like, I didn't want to do that. I had a G85 and I just started to enjoy photography. So I went a different dire direction. Now okay. looking back at it, I should have just stayed with the video part, you know, because I originally had Panasonic, Panasonic was good with video, but now I'm looking at it. I'm like, okay, I just got to get back into the video side because there's so many people that want you to do that. And at the same time, like you said, um, to me, I feel like photography is getting devalued because of the iPhone. A lot of people rather, when they see your price, they rather just use their iPhone. <laughs> You know, like, oh, I the, could do it. I just want yeah. you to do it. I want to be in the picture. So that you yeah. know, and um, yeah, they just don't get it. But when the video, they see transformers, they see all this stuff, and they're like, "Wow, I can't do this crap," you know. So yeah. they mm -hmm. perceive value. It, it, there's a longevity to that skill. And then plus, like I said, you could offer extra things instead of offering extra images. Now you could offer it like, "Hey, I'll make three or five vertical reel videos for you, fifteen seconds each from that." original long form video there's like so much you can do to upsell i got to do a video on upselling and oh, please teach me look, to, teach wait, me it, wouldn't that be a good video like how to awesome video. upselling yeah. in 2024 like we need that um if we want to eat because because um it's harder it's harder and harder i like i i hear the most people that i hear that are like ah you know like coolie not not to point fingers you know you've been in the game a little while yeah. And you ha and you have another job, right? Did you have a job? Are you retired? I'm, I I just always made money, knocking wood. So copy I that. Nice. So you so you have a history of that. So if you're if you're twenty something, you young thirty, you got to have this mindset now because yeah. you don't have the twenty forty or thirty years in a, in an X skill set, right? Mm -hmm. Stacked away. Um, and yes. Use all photography fundamentals. That's why you're halfway there. If you already know photography, your route you went, Mark, you're just fine. Uh, I okay. did I did photography for 12 years and then said, you know what, let me get back into the video. And that's the only reason why I, I moved a little bit faster because of the 12 years of photography, mm -hmm. right? Exposure and everything else. Anyone jump on that borrow lenses sale they had last week on used gear? I saw it. They had some straight up steals on there after lenses rentals. Yeah, you know, I I, I thought I got an email about that, and um, I'm just not. Um, maybe I should have checked for the plena, but I know a certain. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only yeah. lens I like want to get this year is that plena, man. The 135. Uh, that 135 <laughs> is like, it's right. Wayne, tell me if I'm wrong. It's right up there with the 105 f 1.4 lens and great quality, like. Oh that, yeah. It is, it's a work of art. It really is. I played around with John's version. Okay. And I, I mean, I like it. I, I also was on the, on the heavier side is, is what I've been telling him. But in the grand scheme, I also picked up the Zeiss Otis. And I was like, okay, mm -hmm. these things are roughly the same weight. Gotcha. And when I was reading about this land, they talk about that medium for my look, shot both of them together. I was like, you know, Nikon doesn't mention this thing, but at 135, it, it really does. I mean, it, pulls out the subject from the background. Totally. It, it's just popping. Effortlessly. I've never touched the, 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 uh, the 85. It doesn't have the 85. I don't have one. But the 50, like, 1.0. Uh-huh. The Voigtlander, I mean, that looks pretty good, too. But Oof. the 135, I think, just it just takes the cake in, which, when it comes to everything. It I just... Wanna, I think about getting one. Yeah, you see? Yeah. <laughs> and that, you say, I mean, and here's at the end, and has great autofocus. Yes. <laughs> yes. That was the thing that topped it for me was like, I was able to shoot cyclists, Mark, cyclists, and track them, click, sharp. I was like, what? With a 135? What the heck? Yeah. Yep. So anyway, sh that was a little promo for the, one th for the 135. So, so the 135 over the 85 for you? The what? I'm sorry. 135 over the uh, 85 for you? Yes. I'll tell you why. You'll get great performance with the 8518. Mm -hmm. And if you don't shoot at wide open at one, two all the time, which you're not gonna, I could almost bet my bottom dollar, unless you're Jared Pullen, um, <laughs> you'll be fine with 1.8. Okay. You'll, you, your back will like it. That 135 overall was impressive. And it's a spectacular specialty focal length for portraits, I think. And, 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 um, you can't really easily replicate that. You could get good 85 focal length out of a 1.8 mm -hmm. if I need the 
I mean, if I need the 85 look, I can get that. Um, but that 135 is something special, man. I'm t- try it out, man. You're going to be like, I, I'm, I, I might. I might have to. Wayne, if I'm lying, I'm dying. If I'm lying, I'm dying. <laughs> I might so, have to rent it or something. Figure it out. Check yeah. it out, and you'll be like, mm, "How many souls or gra- uh, you know souls do I, I mean, need?" I mean, right now I'm actually in the process <laughs> of selling some of my old equipment right now. And I'm just saying. Like, that's, that's why I've been walking back and forth. So the planet, it's, it's on its own level. It yeah, really is. What kind of stuff you got for sale? You say? Yeah, you... What kind of stuff you got for sale? Oh, right now it's just uh, monitors and oh, okay. uh, old 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 uh music equipment like I, I used to do music too so oh, i was like okay. uh like uh old synthesizer uh some audio interfaces too so oh, wow. just getting rid of things that i don't i don't use anymore i'm trying to mm-hmm. i'm trying to maria condo that stuff <laughs> yeah if you're so, it, <coughs> if you're not using it sell it but yeah exactly back. exactly and anybody who's listening do that too like if you have things you don't use for a while or you're looking to get new equipment go ahead and sell, right. sell your old stuff it's like yeah like i'm seeing quickly that people are there's someone out there that wants something they want 100 yeah. you know so especially if you keep it in solid quality so and if you haven't used it in a year you don't need it yes um yeah. real quick king says i enjoy matching z8 footage with komodo Z8 codecs are so fire compared to my AS3. Wow. Shots, shots fired. Oh, my God. Um, I am sorry, Malcolm, if you're still there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, matter of fact, hey, Wayne. Oh, oh. Wait a minute. Uh, oh, there he goes. Okay. Uh, let me see. Man, they had that planner for, like, Wow. 1600 whoa somebody got lucky 1600 bucks dude that's literally i would have bought it damn oh you, excuse me let me you know what hold on that was borrow lenses right yeah okay let's just let's just check let's just check i, I know not going to sale but i don't think b and or anybody selling the the planner on sale i mean a planner for 1600 dollars I mean, it just came out. What? It, yeah, that price. I even I jump on it. Oh, it didn't say. It doesn't say it exists. Okay. Well. Yeah. I mean, at that price, I would jump on it too. I'd have to just be like, screw it. I'm gonna make it work. Yeah. It's all right, not. I have to take out, take off. You guys have a blessed night. I'll I'll holler at you later. Right. Yeah. yeah and if you want, later. join that web, join that webinar, brother. You know, we sure. talk, we're, we'll talk about video. Have a great day. You too. All right. Goodbye. Okay, Thank you. But that price seems too good to be true. Okay, so hero shots, yeah. that's phenomenal. I got a Z7200 uh, 2.8 for $1,500. That's nice. Whoa. Now that is a great win. Wow. That's phenomenal. I'm eyeballing the 58 knocked. Ooh, he got all the creepy eyeballs in there. Ooh. Oh my God. Wait, Mark. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. Hold on. We have. Another amazing intruder c- coming on in. He's coming in hot. Here we go. Let's welcome Mark to the table, shall we? Come on. It was happening. Hey, I'm hey. so sorry. Come on. Oh, dude, you're good. Shoot, I was sitting there all in, talking about this. Pl- the planner had me going crazy. That's the problem. Uh, so welcome. Uh, let me see here. Let me not get this off this thing here. Awesome. All right. So welcome. What's happening? Good. We're you know we're just talking video and of <laughs> course always talking about lenses <laughs> somewhere in there. Is this this is your first time on my stream, huh? It is. It is. Uh, my wife was on here, uh, I think last year sometime. When you guys oh. were talking, um, Tiffany. Yes. Oh my god. Yes. That's uh, how's she doing? She's doing fantastic. We're. I mean. Super busy. I mean, wedding season's getting ready to kick off, so uh, yeah, we've got thirty nine booked this year, so it's getting ready oh. to get a little. Wow. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we started taking your advice. If you said last year she doesn't want to get into video, she still doesn't want anything to do with video. It's uh, that's all me. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's all me. But I like we were shooting on the um, the D five hundred and the eight fifty, and I'm like, I'm buying the Z eight, so. Here it is. <laughs> and now she's down. 
now she won't put it down. It's like, yeah, exactly. Uh -oh. fired. Every time she wants to go out for a, a session, hit, like, oh, where's my camera? Where? <laughs> All of a sudden, huh? <laughs> yeah, it started a war in the house. She's like, all right, I'm selling everything. I'm getting another Z8. I'm like, that's fine. <laughs> I may make her get into video. I said, I, push her I said, I may make her go over, over to video. I've been trying, you know. I've been telling, I'm telling, I, I, it's just, I'm really happy to say, to see this because I, I felt it in my bones. I'm looking at the market overall, the direction yeah. where everybody's going, the investments always in the video sections of the cameras, the, the, the chasing that, um, the old news, Wayne, tell me if I'm wrong, of how many frames per second. We don't care anymore. Yeah. yeah. We, we don't care. But damn it, if it does great video and autofocus, we're like, do tell. Yeah, why? Why wouldn't yeah. you? <laughs> yeah. Do and and, and I watch. think when, when people start to shoot with the camera and they see what it can do, because Nikon makes it so easy. You know, you can yeah. put it on and say that's the yeah, mode, and you just go. You don't have to know the, the additional stuff. On the Sony, you have to, at least with my FX30, you know, I might shoot that. 50 megabits per second, 100 megabits, 200 megabits. So I have all those choices going on. My kind is a little bit different where it's either SDR or analog, 24 yes. frames, 35, 30, whatever, and then go into raw. And you don't need to know how many, you know, how many data is going to be streaming. They take care of all that. And I think a lot of times, if you're used to the older cameras, well, that's just the older, the other cameras, that is tell you how much data you're, you're using. Then yeah. you kind of well, I don't know about this. This is what I want to see. But from a simple standpoint, to start off with, I just want to shoot video. Yeah. If I need is... a bigger memory card, maybe I'll need to do it. Yeah. You do SDR, right. you want to do analog, or you want to do raw. That's pretty much yeah. the levels. Totally. No, you're absolutely yeah. right. It's straightforward. What do you want? Twelve bit or ten bit? Hello, yeah. and call it a day. Um, yeah. Even with the with the Panasonic S5 Mark II. You get all that extra stuff. And for those mm -hmm. who don't know what they're looking at, it looks so intimidating. Uh, but there is reasons. I mean, like if you're shooting for Netflix, they want a certain amount of bit, you know, right. uh, megabits per second. But for those who don't know, they're like, this looks like a map to crazy land. And yeah. you're 100%. This is very streamlined. And um, I, I enjoy it now. Now, Nikon for video, you could take it serious. Mm -hmm. You could actually agree. take it serious. Look, I'm I'm streaming right now with the Z8. Uh, another idea for you, Mark. Um, I, well, I would have, but she had the camera at her shoot. I'm like, hey, where? What did you? Where did it go? Oh, you can't five, take your 500 with you. <laughs> I got well, it. hey, that let that lets us know you did the right choice. Get that camera. That's right. And you future proof your business. With That's that true. camera, right? Think about it. Even though our screens may do up to 5K, these retina screens, you could shoot 8K, future-proofing your project. That's what you could tell your client and charge them more for it. Uh, that you, <laughs> you know, so 100%. And I'm glad it's working out for all of you. Uh, by the way, not in any way has Nikon hit me up and said, can you talk about our Nikon video? Z8, Z9. I'm telling you what works for me and what I believe may work for one or two souls out there. And I'm glad I'm hearing this. This only gets me more fired up to make more video content. So this is awesome news. We do have some comments. Let's let's get them in here. I, I, I'm, I, me hearing about these deals at Borrow Lenses makes me very upset. I'm not going to lie because I missed them all. Um, you're all making me curious about that planner. I'm telling you, King, go get that yes, plan up yeah. for photo, photos or video. You will not go wrong. Hey, hey um, Mark, you guys sound like you're about to have a fantastic wedding season. At the end, get a plan up. Just bless yourself. It's a tax write-off. You already know how this works. At the end, when you do your portraits with that plan your brain will literally explode. Well, the clients will explode. I have literally yeah. been saying that we need that. <laughs> we at least at least need to run it once and be like, hey, let's just let's just explode our minds. Try, real quick. try it, and they will be like, what in the flapjack? Even though you yeah. shot the same settings, they'll be like, yo, you're the man and woman. It, yeah. <laughs> um, that planner was gone quick. I would have got it too. Oh yeah, for sixteen hundred bucks, 
that's a steal. Yep. That's eight hundred dollars off. Um, one thing for is the aesthetic and feel of the camera, the Komodo. Just by looking at it, I want to pick it up and use it. The Z8, same thing. The A7S III is just gathering dust. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry to hear that. Now I'm not here to bash Sony because that autofocus system is is turned on and it works. Let's just be honest. They set them. They set the tone when it came to autofocus and full frame in the mirrorless world. Right? They really yep. said, "Hey, they woke everybody up." So let's give Sony their just dues. Plus, up to now. Hopefully, uh, they have been doing s the, the the sensors for Nikon. Nikon might do, you know, I don't know. But uh, but right now, so let's be honest. Sony is nothing to be uh, making fun of, but this just lets us know that our continued loyalty and sticking with Nikon has pa is paying off, right? <laughs> People laughed at all of us Nikon shooters. I'm telling you. And it finally is paying off, man. And plus, I invested too much. I'm too broke into Nikon. You know what I mean? If it ain't Panasonic or Nikon, I'm like, I don't know what to tell you. Um, and I would like to see global shutter in a future Z8. Come on, a Z8 Mark II with a global shutter now seems to be it could be a reality, right? What do you think, Wayne? I think it's possible, but I think we may get that in one of our other Z9 comes out first. Ooh. You know, part of my mind is like maybe I could have done something with like a Z6 III that's coming out, but I don't know. I think maybe they will do like a video only camera, some well, cinema, I should say, kind of like, oh, like, like an FX3, FX30, and you know, the uh, C70, Mark okay. 5C, specific of video side stuff. Because if I, the whole thing, like I was saying about focusing on the top level first, mm. I don't think that would bring it on a lower level camera. I think we see another top level camera come out with that kind of technology. And I think going with some of what Red does, mm -hmm. yeah, Nikon may have something on like a cinema side, but not going to be at the same level as Red, but give That's some right. of those folks who want to still have a hybrid camera and don't want to spend the 15, 20, whatever, you know, Red cost, but give you some of that features inside of it. I think that they're going to be like Sony on Canon. They're going to have some cinema stuff, but they're not going to do it in such a way to encroach upon their bigger side of the business. Now that they have it. Now that they have it. See, the Z8 and the Z9 came out at such a great time because they didn't have anything above it where they gave mm -hmm. us all the features, right? They dumped everything into these cameras. Yep. If they had the red then, I don't think we would have gotten a lot of that stuff. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah, I mean, some people said they were working on it from... Uh, last year, I remember some, somebody just sent me a message like you know, last two days when I did uh -huh. my video talking about Nikon, um, on Red and what will happen in the lawsuit. You know, he said in his comment, Nikon bought Red, mm. and he came in this time around and said, See, I told you, I'm like, You were right, man, but I, I can't say anything other than that. But maybe some people had some inside information on what was going to happen. And now we're seeing it come into fruition. But we know that the Z9 was coming out that was, you know, to do internal raw, it came out without internal raw. Something occurred to allow them to do it in from a 2.0, right? Some kind of agreement. The Z8 took long to come to market. After the lawsuit was dismissed, here comes the Z8, internal raw. So maybe they've been working on it for some time and they finally came to a conclusion like, you know what? We'll use your R&D money to build our new stuff, your you know, new technology that you have to manufacture casing and so on. We want some mm -hmm. of that. Mm. Because every time I have to go to court, I talk about red, you're spending a lot of money on lawyers to protect your IP. And it takes you drives for a period of time. You have a lot of cameras that you're selling to rental houses and to some individuals. But at the cost of what they are, you're not going to sell a ton of them. Yeah. Icon can basically Nikon get in the there. Exactly. There you they go. Can, do what they can do. lawyer your ass right into kingdom come. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. They have a larger market share. They could weather the storm. They got the pockets for it. And Red, I mean, they're in California. I mean, they're just, you know, they're like a startup, if you will. And they, they're very specialty. And they're phenomenal mm -hmm. at what they do. That's why they're great, because that's what they yeah. do. Um, I thought it, that's why I thought it was a 
a brilliant idea. They don't have to re they don't have to spend millions in R and D into entering into that space. They literally adopt yep. it and then call it red by Nikon. Yeah. I would and I mean that even have to because you see there is that Marcus, what is that company that does um the arms and so on for video? Because many people don't talk about that stuff. Nikon bought that I think it's Marcus. I can't remember the exact name of it, but it's a company that Nikon buy. If you go on Nikon's global site, you look at under an uh, imaging, it shows up right. underneath there. And they said this company, a Nikon company. So I think it's the same thing with red. It's gonna be red, a Nikon company. I don't think they're gonna change it to Nikon. Okay, it'll just be one of their brands underneath the yeah. family. Yes. Ah, Let's see if I can find it and take the name of it. That's what I was thinking too, because they're not gonna want to get rid of that oh, no right really now. Gotcha. Right. Okay. So we're under a uh, consumer product and services on their on their global site. Yeah. Oh, you look at oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they have a lot of stuff on here. Ah, and then the business. imaging solutions, I think, is uh the area. Okay, let me go there. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Oh, so this is the company overall website. Okay, technology, creative, innovation, yada yada. So uh yeah. talking about it's video. Not, well, this is whatever. something newer that they started in the last year or two. It's not that one. I guess I can find uh send me that when you get when we're done with all this. Sure. I'm curious to look at it. Yeah. This is, but I, I didn't even know about that site. I just go to NikonUSA.com for my obvious reasons you know and yeah. they're not they're not talking about that part no the stuff was from so, last year when they acquired that company but you guys may not know but nikon glass has been in cinema for decades yep oh wow hold on well excuse me actually that was probably mm -hmm. the wrong damn button but nonetheless i did not know that that's pretty awesome um, I mean, yeah, when I had my, lens. I'm so sorry. I said, you know, Icon's been making lens for the broadcast market and so on for years, but I think they stopped. They made this like really great lens that it cost a lot of money and it didn't catch on. So you know, oh. a lot of R and D, and it's like, okay, well, I guess Where's the return, huh? Yeah, retire that because you're not going to get much money out of it. Well, when I uh, interviewed uh, Sigma. Aaron at Sigma at WPPI, that whole conversation was about Cine lenses and Cine versus still lenses. And they were saying, hey, our Cine lenses are the exact quality of our art lenses. So if you're using an mm -hmm. art lens, color, sharpness, detail, it's the same exact thing. It's just the it's just how you're using that lens is what's different. So that's one thing there, because I was like, Sig uh, Sigma already makes lenses. They've been making Cine. But I was like, we need to talk to people more about it because we know them for their art lenses, you know, their affordable art lenses. And um, to your point, yeah, they've been making all these optical lenses in the past. I could totally see. But here's the thing I could totally see. Them rolling out full steam ahead. I don't know. Instead of gold ring, some other damn ring, you know. Someone said rose gold because it's red and, and, and yellow. Uh, cine lenses and actually producing and they're marketing cine lenses. Uh, you have Seven Artisans is an entry level cinema lens company that some people like, especially for the price because it's very affordable. They don't have to worry about autofocus. They can make manual lenses much cheaper, right? It's It tends to be cheaper. And um, I could see them making a consumer-based cinema line of lenses. I think that would be great. I'd buy them. I'd buy it. I think, I think they will. Um, but, again, it's going to be how many people are going to be able to afford that, as you say. Once they get enough of the, these creators, we've been seeing them doing videos. If enough uh -huh. of those people pick up the cameras and are using them in that capacity more and more, and they're asking for more of it, then it will come out. They probably want some. We want to be something that most of us photographers are going to pick up, or even who are just starting on the video. But the guys who are really filming and using it for business purposes, you know, they're going to want to jump on that because on the Z mount, it's going to be really good. It's you know, I can yeah. think if we may see like Canon did that uh, twenty eight to one was it twenty four to one twenty one hundred five sorry two point eight lens. That's yeah. 
practically the size of a 70 to 200, the same weight, really, you know, that's a good video lens. You didn't think of it from the first standpoint because if you're in photography mindset, that's like huge. But then what does a cinema lens look like? It's a big metal case and it's much heavier than that. And they have things in that range. It's going to be some gigantic lens that yeah. utilizes it. So for Sony, to, sorry, for Canon to make that lens for video people, it's not on their cinema line, even though it probably will serve well on the R5C, but you can still use it on any other video camera. That is something that people were looking for. We want something that has a good range with a 2.8, but I think but as more people are looking at the video. It, stop it though. Hmm? I, so if I were to use a lens like that, like say a 24 to 105 or something, right? I don't want it to be telescopic, like it, like when you zoom, you know, like when you're zooming and it's like, zoop, zoop, you know what I mean? I want it mm -hmm. to stay right where it's at because if it's on a gimbal or something like that, it dramatically shifts the weight and you have to rebalance and everything else like that. So that's one theah, thing well, that I would want. It's internal. You see the lens? No, I know that lens is, but not all the yeah. rest of them in that class are. So what I'm saying no. is like, as long as it's not doing that, then it's very useful for me um, for video. When I'm thinking about it for video. Yeah, let me just yes. show you guys something real quick. Let me show you something. Nikon can totally do this. Okay. Come on, folks. Mm -hmm. Nikon can totally do this. Look at these lenses on Amazon right now. These are Cine lenses, all $1,100, $1,200, whatever. Uh, this is the company I'm looking at, this one here. Irix. Okay. And you get yourself a Cine lens, RF mount, all this other stuff, right? And look at all these 1100, zero, they, but that's Super 35, okay? But look, they do a set of Super 35s all for a thousand dollars. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They could totally do this kind of stuff. So what I'm saying is 1100 or 1200 dollars would still be a very affordable lens in the scheme of things because we're buying our our lenses for two grand for a mirrorless yeah. lens. Yeah. But I, I don't think Nikon is going to price it at that low price. You would have to compare it to like, you know, the big boys. They're going to make it like high quality. And we're probably going to see that on red first before we see it on the Z line. All right. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping they come up with two. They got like in mirrorless, they got, <laughs> they got the 1.8s, right? For us, uh, you know, for folk, for regular people. And then they got the 1.2s for the people who are like dedicated. You know, you know I don't know, working class folks so i'm like if they come up with two lines that would be i'm i'm just trying to think of the big scheme of things right can they mm -hmm. do it if anybody could do it they could do it especially now that they have red they could justify it to stakeholders look we got this market we can sell it directly you know um i don't see why not and look man we're just all hoping and praying but man that would be so good to have nikon cine lenses like that would be such a cool option um Mark. Speaking of the one two lenses, I've been yeah. waiting for that one two thirty five to release forever. It's on their list, but it's not out yet. Yeah, that is. Um, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Which lens is that? The thirty five one two. Oh, the, the mystery lens that should be coming out soon. It should be. I mean, that's that one's our favorite one for weddings, but um, it's not out yet. I mean, we're just on the one four from the F mount still. Wow. Yeah, I've been I've been um, seeing that on the roadmap for a long time. Must it's be a long a road. Road. It's like waiting for you know Whoops. another coming of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> coming of Jesus for real. Yeah, that, that lens right there. I think that, 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 they want to make it the best they possibly can. I mean, people love the planner, and the planner thing sold more than they expected it to plan even um, to sell, even at the price point it is. Mm. The knock maybe not as much. But I think we're going to see more of those, you know, name lens that are going to come out. So maybe the 35 will come out with its own name, something I similar so. to like Plan 9 and Opt. Oh, yeah, you might be right, huh? That's a good point. All right, Wayne, Wayne with the prediction. Um, and that's a nice way of forgiving them for taking too long. But, that, <laughs> <laughs> but I, yeah, I, I would love to see it. Um, the 35 would be fun. It's just such a fun lens to walk around with, too, the 35. I think that's Absolutely. why I like my um, on my ZF. I have this twenty eight and the forty. Like those are fun focal links to walk around with. So yeah, and for you, you I, I think you'd buy that in two seconds. You know, for what you do, Mark. Yeah, absolutely. It would definitely be versatile. 
uh, Cooley, would you do you use a 35 in your weddings and stuff? I usually go with two bodies. One has a a, a 7200 on it, and the other one has a 24. What was it? 24 to 70. And those mm -hmm. are my two lenses. And I have like a uh, 28 to 105 for when I set up backgrounds and do portraits on the background and stuff. Oh, okay. So I use that one for that. I mean, it's all kind of, I've got like four. I got four Nikon D750s. So I have plenty what, of backup. Four <laughs> what? What? Four Nikon D750s, the four, the four frames. Oh, I know. I'm a, glutton, I'm a glutton for punishment. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like a beginner. Uh, no. <laughs> four. no, I'm just saying like four of them. Like, oh, is that overdue or overkill? I think not. No, that's a lot of cameras. Um, <laughs> you never have too many. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, now you really need five if you want to be a pro. You know what I mean? Oh, I do, but they don't, they're not my favorite. <laughs> right now, you're still, I. it's cute to start with four, but once you're at the five, you know. <laughs> now you're a real pro. Now you're a pro, right? <laughs> they won't ask you about your cell phone after that. Um, hold on, oh, one no. thing in the aesthetic. Da, 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 da. It's Mark Roberts motion control. Yes. Yes. Help me. Help uh, me. I've been searching that. for this thing and I couldn't find it, but that's it. And I think it's, that um, if I remember. This. Oh, what they bought, you're saying? Yeah. The company they bought. Oh, motion control. I, I think that's for the robotics and stuff. Remember the last, last year, so you guys went to. I sure, I think it was Vaga was saying they didn't have much on Nikon. You know, there was bikes out there, and the, the Z9 was on this robotic arm oh, and it was moving yeah. around along with the screen. So that's all oh, part yeah. of that they've been doing to jump into the, the video creation side. But since most of us are basically video side with more photography, we weren't really paying much attention to that. It's like Nikon is building out the line. But if you think about making movies, what are these guys um, doing? They're utilizing rigs with uh, robotic arms and some of the stuff they're going to be in the with that volumetric stuff that they're doing, that 3D stuff they have, that Nikon creates thing that you're looking at. So it, it's all coming together now, seeing them pick up red. Wow. Now it's coming full circles, what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, King says, Sigma Cine lenses are awesome, and they come with eye data. Oh, that's okay. I'm not sure what that is, but that sounds What's dope. That? I'm not sure what that is. Flash eye data. 100. Um, you know, the build quality was phenomenal. I mean, I'm not going to lie. It does look pretty sexy. Um, mm -hmm. But so many single lenses are super 35, and I have yeah. to get used yes. to that. You know, because, I mean, I'll shoot th super 35, but I got to have an 8, not an 18, a... Um, you know, something that's super wide, 14 millimeter or something, just so I could get a nice 20, 20 mil or something like that would be nice or 24. And like that, what was it? The, um, the C root, something like that. By 10 to 12 is what you're saying. Something like that. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I need those for, options. For the real wide angle. Um, we have Nick Corsini lenses should compete with Cookies, Zeiss, Coke. Cine lenses, Cokes, Cokes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. uh, Cine lenses, not with the low budget 1003K lenses. Exactly. Yeah, that's what Wayne said. He said they're going to go hard and go heavy, huh? Ooh. Yeah. Well, that sounds like I'm going to get a Sigma lens. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Adapt that son of a gun. Seven artisans, here I come. Uh, I have a I have a uh, anamorphic lens from Cyru Cyru whatever they're called, and yeah. hey Anthony, uh, that's a good he he was yeah we hung out at WPPI he's a cool guy, shout out to him, um and that anamorphic lens I got for, uh twelve hundred dollars and that thing's built so well it's such a great lens and so some of these third parties do make some quality stuff. They yeah. make this up. So, you know, if you can't afford a Zeiss slash Nikon slash red awesome lens, there's some good third parties. So let me throw one at you here. You huh? use a follow focus um setup on your camera, your mm -hmm. video rig, right? Yeah. So there's a Zeiss Milvus line. 
they're much cheaper than the Otis line. The Otis line is like 4,000 plus or more, depends on which one you want. And then the mill. Or what? 100 or up for the Milva line. Of course, if I them use, they'll be less than that. Um, That's nice Milvas. Okay, how much? How much is the cheaper one? The uh, more affordable one? Let me look and say one second. Okay, while you do that, let me welcome Malcolm in real quick. Let me welcome in. Mm -hmm. We got Malcolm Walker in the house. Hey, good evening, everybody. Hey, hey Malcolm. How's it going? Talking Good lenses. You, yeah, I, I've been I've been listening. I've been working here in the am I, am I the one back feeding? Say something. Am something? I back feeding? Oh now you're good. No? Okay. Are you good now? Weird. Yeah, now you sound good. Uh yeah, you know, I've just been working here in the studio, just getting shelves hung up stuff tonight, listening and uh you know uh, not enough uh, diversity in this room. Uh, so I need to get in here with some Sony stuff. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little bias in this room, isn't it? Huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me say alpha one time while I'm here. No. Yeah. <laughs> I get paid for that alpha. No. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> like uh, you got to do it with the voice of like America. So let me get this alpha up in here right quick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so shout out to Malcolm. If anybody shoots Sony, go check out his channel. All right. Um, so wait, uh, Wayne, which lens yeah. did you say? What, what, what? Milvers, the Zeiss Milvers slide. So, I'm looking at it on Amazon. They have like the 25 1.4, which is 2000, the 35 mm. 1.4, 1659. Mm. The 50 I tested out the other day. I didn't buy it, but I bought the oldest version. That one is also 1.4 at 1000. Um, oh. 1009. 1400. Let's call it 1500 for the 85. And the cool thing about you know these lenses you can always take off the, the rear section if you don't want and use different mounts on them they oh, were designed that way by zeiss and the nikon version has um aperture stops on it the canon doesn't i think a lot of people would get the nikon version because if you want to control your aperture you can do that but they'd also make those rings that goes on there for the gear in for the follow focus so you can get that kit and put on there and then you can utilize it on your rig and I, oh. you know, if you saw my video that when i was showing some pictures from the zeiss lens that i bought and how they look i mean the, the, i i just i am in love with it i still want to buy some more of them and yeah i'm looking at the build line as well and i'll tell you this okay. they are not light like at 25 this is almost like three pounds and i'm like what oh the hell God. 25 millimeter yeah those 1.4 lenses they are in the heavy side I like the 85. It was heavier than the 55 Otis, which I think was a pretty heavy lens as well. Okay. And I was like, no, uh, this be later when I'm not traveling. One of these lenses alone in my bag is good enough. Well, but they're on sale away for some pretty crazy prices. That's why I'm tempted like just buy them. How's the quality though? Dude, when I said to you, you thought that medium format look from these lenses. You've you heard about the oldest, right? When they were building this thing, Zeiss put the guys in a you know in a room and like make the best thing possible, no compromise. That's how and you don't end up with. You do so, huh? <laughs> yes, and it's you know you wouldn't care much money you spend on it, just make it. Wow. So you end up with the oldest line. People are saying the Milvus line is ninety five percent of what the oldest is. The Milvus line is weather sealed, while the oldest line is not. Mm. Look what they only made four lens in the oldest line, and the Melvus fills out pretty much the entire range from I think it's eighteen or fifteen all the uh, way up to one thirty-five. And it's super thirty-five. No, no, no. They're not super thirty-five. They're full frame. Oh, because these were made during the um, F mount. They were made from F mount lenses. Oh, from twenty thirteen time frame. But people who do video are utilizing these lenses because the quality is just so good. Superb. Yeah. Yeah. And and they're shooting manual. They don't need like autofocus to work perfectly on those things, right? Nope. You get those rings you put on there, you follow focus system. Yeah. So yeah, he's he's concurrent. He's agreeing with you right here. Yeah. Good for AK. 
Hey guys, keep oh, chatting. Yeah. Give me two seconds. I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah, that video I did on the oldest, I did like a quick video inside of it with 8K, but I really want to play around with it more because trying to do focus pull with just your hand is not the easiest thing in the world. My eyes aren't the best. I'm outside trying to, you know, take a video of my wife and do a focus pull from her bag to her face. I'm like, yeah, if I really decide to go deep in the video and go crazy with this stuff with a manual focus lens, I definitely would need a focus puller. It's cool yeah. how it can do how it works because the focus straw on it is long. And that's what I liked about this lens is because I could take a picture and focus it with like one finger. That's how smooth the, the, the focus ring is. But the throw is so long that I was saying to myself, when I had the 58 um was it my Voigtlander Nocturne 1.4. You know, if you're kind of slightly off, you're like, okay, things are kind of skewed. It's not in focus anymore. But with this one, you can dial it in, and it's like you're going to shift more, and it's like it's there. You've got it. You have like a little bit of play, and it's like it's it's you still got it right there. The Milvus line, I think it's I want to say it's 260 or 270 uh, degree focus throw. It's even more. So for the follow focus system, people say it works better with that. So you get a fine, you get a, such a finer control with that long throw too, because it's yes. When you're trying that's to just what I'm do, about. yeah, right. Yes, sweet lens. Do we get a chance to play with one? Yeah. Hmm. I'm just warming up some coffee. <laughs> I, I, I left it a good mind to me because I left it in the table and touch it. We're, we're <laughs> yeah, turning this exactly. into a twelve-hour live tonight, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing the marathon. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's I, out I've, getting cold. Hmm? <laughs> Say again? What? So my coffee is out in the other room getting cold. Oh, yeah. My wife just bought mine to me because it was just getting cold. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you very much. Sorry about that. Okay. No problem. I drank like a whole bottle of water. I'm like, Rub yeah, roll. it caught up. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! I'm about to do a rain dance and the uh, MC Hammer dance in about two seconds with that water. I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> uh, all right, so we got King in here. Robert, you don't know Zeiss Otis? Oh, <laughs> clearly. Uh, Brody, please hang up this call and get you some Otis. On the line, it's the truth. There you go. <laughs> well, that's well, that's cool. Uh, if you haven't seen my video I did on it, watch it. Uh, this is a client. I'm so sorry. This is the most oddest thing on my live stream. <laughs> you got a client on your live stream? No, she's texting me, and this oh. is a client, so. I'll, no offense to you guys. I gotta I gotta answer that text. Yeah, handle business, man. Yeah, she I she said uh because she you know you ever use Pixie set? Like she didn't I don't think she clicked send. So I never got the selections. So, oh uh, when can I get it? I said, trust me, I'll flip your photos over real quick. You're a great client. And uh but the uh but I don't think I got I never got the email saying um sh to see her selections. Uh So sorry about that, guys. So yeah, if you can pixie set, you gotta. It may seem easy, but a lot of times you have to like coach them through on how to actually press send and stuff like that. And anyway, you gotta like coach them through the download process too. I've noticed. Oh yeah, see, I do the download through um, my, my Google Drive. It's large, so like I'm mm. paying like the two terabytes. So I keep a dedicated folder, and then I keep it there for like. 30 days and then after that I take it off you know what I mean yeah but you're right yeah you gotta have like four ways because one of them will work eventually for the <laughs> <laughs> that's what I noticed it's like oh that one didn't work okay let's try this one let's try this you know what I'm gonna stop by and just give it to your computer okay <laughs> um Anthony says Robert is going on to get his Otis out of the warehouse hey man you guys are really hyping up this Otis thing, like for real, for real. I'm uh, telling you, 
I, I remember when it came out years ago. I never paid much attention because back then, you know, four thousand dollars for a lens is like, dude, that's more than what I spent for a camera. It, it's not for me. It's manual focus only. Yeah. But I remember all the reviews that were written about it and people talking about it. And when I saw it, the store I was like, "What? This is for sale for a thousand dollars, thirteen hundred? What it was?" I'm like, "Yo, that's a steal! It's ninety five percent of quality. They still had the box and everything." And I was like, um, "Yeah, I want to check it out." But then they also mentioned the Milva slime, which they had like new in the box as well. Mm. They had a clearance, and I'm like, "Okay, I tried both of them." I'm like, nah. When I took the picture, I not just you know used the, the focus ring. I was like. I like the odors. It may not have weather seal, it may not, but it just felt really good. And I took a couple of pictures in the store with my wife, you know, the 58 knocked the 85 and, yeah. and 51.4 Milvers and then the oldest. And I was like, yeah, like I like the oldest. So I'll take that one. Wow. Okay. Wow. Great. Jeez, I gotta check this out. And what is the name? What's the mounting they come with? It's a Zeiss Otis ZF2 is what the mount is called, which is basically for F mount. But you can get adapters all day to work with it. Yeah, if you wanted like for use for different things, they have you, you can have to work with um Zeiss to like screw off the, the bottom and get like a different mount to put on it. Oh, okay. But it's a F mount lens, so you can use your you know FTZ adapter and adapt it to your Z. And it, right there, and yeah. it's crazy. <clears throat> Oh, okay. I think he knows each other. Okay, that's what's up. Uh, Chris used F mount 400 mil F 2.8 R cell for around 2K ish now on a Z8. Yeah, what it. Your thoughts on using older great F mount lenses in 2004, uh, 24 F mount lenses prices are dropping. Get it. He said, Get it. Well, there you go. Um, me, I, I think obviously lenses, if they're great, they're great. Clearly, Wayne just spent the last 10 minutes talking about it, you know. And uh, that's the good thing about lenses. Like, if they're good, they're good. Yep. You're going to change bodies multiple times throughout the, the time you own a lens. Mm -hmm. And a 400 f2.8, that was about, what, 6K or whatever back in the day? I mean, how much does the Z400 2.8 cost today? Yeah, that's true. That's so true. So if you think about what that lens cost back then, and you can get it for around 2K-ish, the quality is not changing on the lens. Mm. From when it was first released to now, you're saying, yeah, yeah, good point, very good point. Look about what I see when it was out. Yeah, the lens is always like the better investment in terms of like longevity, and uh, you you could get back seventy percent of your money a lot of times, you know. So and especially those top quality ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like like when I re I, I resell, I didn't even lose. I I bought the one hundred five one four, right f lens. 1500 and I sold it for 1500. I was like, oh, okay, because I bought it used and I sold it and I still, oh, hey, that was awesome. So I basically rented it for free. Yeah, uh, rent, you yeah. know what I mean? And yeah. people love that lens. Um, hold on, let me see here. Hey, Chris, where did you find? Oh, okay, he's he's looking for that lens. <laughs> uh, get the Nikon ZF2, it comes with manual aperture ring. Uh, the uh, the Canon version comes with electronic aperture only. Yeah. Um, okay. Huh. So you learn. We're learning a lot. We're going into cine lenses this episode, and I did not plan that at all. You're talking video now. You're getting into more stuff. Yeah. See, that's and you can't plan when you got five, four people added to your panels either. I know. That's why I'm like, <laughs> you know what? Uh, when when it was six thirty, and I was like. Let me open it up for 30 minutes. I was like, yeah. I know what's going to happen, Robert. Are you ready? <laughs> Are you ready for this? <laughs> um, have, uh, have you guys been following the, Mike Tyson? The what? Hmm? Say again? Cooley? I think he froze. Yeah, he said, froze. I think he asked, him, Are you following Mike Tyson? Uh, him trying to fight that other dude, the young guy? Oh, my gosh. Nah. Uh, it, that's just a ploy for us to spend money on some stupid this is all a setup you know it's like <laughs> circus du soleil you know and do we honestly care no does it matter in boxing absolutely not does it degrade boxing probably does because it's like a circus it's not even like it's real like these dudes climbed up the ranks the 90s and the 80s had the best boxers right 
Like that was the end. After the nineties, there was like no more great heavyweight boxing or lightweight or nothing. And yeah, it's a kaputs. You don't have Pac Pacquiao. That was the last grades. You know, like all these like now it's just all a sham. Because they need to bring in more people into Vegas to watch a fight that really doesn't matter. Right? Mm-hmm. And the more of the boxing. This is just a what do you call it? A one on one. And they're just trying to get a pay per view payoff. Was it an exhibition? An exhibition. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. Mm-hmm. And Mazel Tov for them to get their money or whatever. But man, I got shit to do. I don't know. <laughs> uh, you know, what I am excited about. Uh, this uh, that they're gonna make Peaky Blinders movie. Hello, I'm more ex- I'm more excited about Peaky Blinder movie than I am about these two fools fighting in a ring. You know what I mean? And uh, I could care absolutely less about Mike Tyson. I mean, I'm really happy I remade a new version of his life. To like, I mean, this man's make he's killing the game. But do I care about this old man boxing? Man, knock it off. <laughs> Smoke your weed, get on your podcast, and enjoy life. <laughs> okay, because his life could have been somewhere else. So he should be rejoicing, not acting like a dang fool. But they're paying him probably with a shit ton of money. It's true. That's what it is. I always say, what's the over under on uh, Jake Paul losing an ear in the match? <laughs> to, to Mike Tyson? <laughs> yeah. Hey, if he could get one of them blows that he got, like a 1989 Mike Tyson blow to the face, it's a wrap, son. Mike Tyson was taking cats out six inches taller than him and stuff. Like, that fool, he's a beast. Yeah, Real quick, uh, Robert, I mean, let me just throw this out there for, for Chris in the chat. Oh, yes. Uh, that lens was $9,000 before tax. I think cool. he says MPB has it for fifteen twenty nine. Get it. Mm. Get that, it. You that's said. less than half price. If it's in gold quality, yeah. If he got it for nine hundred, you're saying? No, I'm saying it was nine thousand. Oh, right and if you get it for fifteen hundred right now. Yes. He said that's, that's like me, me getting that oldest for eleven hundred or you know less, something like that. Yeah. Okay. All right, Chris. You heard it. You. you heard it. Now, as you're building out all these lenses, and if you're doing video, uh, video, do not forget to invest also in quality lighting, please. Yes. Everybody, like, I know we're in photography. Like I mentioned earlier, I I don't think you were here, Wayne. I was like, mm-hmm. we could we 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 forget how much mistakes we can make on purpose because we could fix it in Lightroom, Photoshop, whatever, or mm-hmm. creative editing techniques. Video is not always that forgiving. Get it right in camera matters way more in video. And um, lighting, lighting, li- like lighting is key. I know I say composition is king. I, I would say lighting is right mm-hmm. up there. It's its twin in importance. And um, so don't forget to, like right now, you know what I'm looking at in lighting? Like obviously I'm lighting, I have to make sure I look lighting here. But for filmmaking, I'm looking at aperture lighting. I'm looking at like expensive ass lighting for once. I need a six. Aperture's point. looking pretty good. I mean, I, I've got yeah. a. This year, I plan on investing in a decent light for the studio here, and it's, mm. it's right. I'm still running little original Roto. Well, I don't know if they're the original. They're the Roto Light Neos. Oh, uh, and, and they work. Oh no, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. They, they work. They work plenty well for for what I've been doing. But I've been mishmashing these three rotolite neos into different formats and different ways to do all my lighting for for years now so well it's time to it's time to upgrade check this out see this loom cube. Oh. You got the the loom, cube. loom cube said do you have this one mark did you say you had a loom cube i, I got the pro over there awesome yeah. so i have the loom cube uh panel kit and that's what i'm lighting myself key light and then i have a rear light right back there and it comes with this awesome fancy little remote. You know what I mean? Look at that cool little re- Okay, you can't see it. But anyway, it's a remote. And it works really well. Um, and it comes with the stand, the cables. The batteries are internal in a... Uh, can I just show you guys this? I have to show you this since we're talking about lights, okay? Here comes the money. Here we go. <laughs> money talks. <laughs> All right. Money does talk, but that wasn't the button I wanted. <laughs> 
<laughs> so with this here, here's the reason why I like it. I don't have any. I hate having cords everywhere. Look at the battery. It's built internally. That's and sweet. It, and it's all one light. What do they call it? They call that the uh, edge lighting. Okay. So edge light all the way. And it's super fucking thin. <laughs> Look how thin that thing is. That's crazy, man. Nice. And what I like about it is depending on the um, intensity, you actually see how many hours left of juice you got. Okay. You know what I mean? See it on the top there? You can see how much juice you have left. All right. And you can see right there, like, oh, nine more hours at 5%. And it's by color. Okay. Regardless of your orientation, it's by color. Hello. Okay. That's a bad joke. Anyway, so these things are great. They're great. They're lightweight. And it comes with the charger, a stand for each of the lights. And in two panels, all in one kit. That's what I use for, for my vlogging and stuff. And it's bright as hell. And this is, that key light is only at, um. hold on. Let me see what this key light is at, guys. Let me get you go all back up in here. Someone dropped out. Um, oh, we lost Cooley locked up, remember? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that key light is only at 10%, while the real light is only at 5%. This thing will last a five-hour stream, no problem. So with all that said, I'm just saying there are options that could really level it up. This is what I use personally. And uh, shout out to Loom Cube. Uh, but nonetheless, lighting is important. But I do want those aperture, the 600D, I believe it is. I'm willing to plunk down $1,000. That's that's where I'm at right now. Welcome back, Cooley. Yeah, sorry about that. A little power failure. Because <laughs> I figure I could always turn down the light. But man, there have been some times I needed to turn it up some more. Right? And I'm like, damn. So, you know what? Instead of wasting my money just because I want it to be affordable, man, just plunk down the money. Make sure it's Bowen's mount and rock and roll, baby. You know? Um, I've never seen anybody buy a 600D and be like, why did I buy this? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, let me see that video, right? Uh, here we go. Uh, good looking. I might buy it right now. Let me grab my computer. Ooh. Wow. People are getting that lens, Wayne. You talking it up. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, the that's other, that's the other light mil. out there. That's what a 402.8. 400, yeah. And what were you saying? Uh, what were you saying, Malcolm? Oh, I'll say that another affordable option, obviously, is, uh, from the Aperture 600D is I think Small Rig's got a, a very similar light now, also that has uh, it's by it's by color, you know, a contender with that 600D. I can't remember which which model it is, but it came out about a year well, ago, maybe. Okay, I'll have to research because I know Godox with their no lead line. I think they have one close to that. The only thing with aperture is that, like, if I'm gonna spend good money, they just I agree that with that name brand. Like everybody in cinema that I respect uses aperture, consistent yeah. um, colors, accuracy. So, like, if I'm gonna spend a grand on one stupid LED light, I might as well go with something I know that does that make sense. I, oh, I agree completely with that statement. I mean, there's no doubt. I'm just saying that the, for other options out there for for those folks that I. It, it's better to have invest in some sort of lighting mm. for your system if you can't afford a thousand dollars for a light because totally that's that's no joke when you get into lighting mm. you're absolutely right and like i said there have been way too many times like i have a 230 watt is like or 240 watt is my strongest and even at times i was like damn i wish i could pump this up a little because i want that iso to be as low as possible when it comes to video, I don't care. Mm -hmm. It like you you tap sixteen hundred, it looks like crap in the shadows. In photos, you could fix the hell out of it, but man, video it's a wrap. And I just hate messing with all that crap. And um, it it takes a bit of work, but you, you can clean up some of that. And I, I I've gotten into the noise reduction stuff okay. because of the FX thirty. Okay, and shoot some stuff at nighttime. And in Resolve, I mean, it works fairly well. It can up some of that stuff on there. So, oh, it cleans it up. You know, you get well the light right from 
yeah, because you know me, I'm I'm more on the street walking around with stuff. Not like if I'm gonna shoot something in a hotel room or wherever, um, and it's darker, I prefer to use the ZA because I can do a two point eight lens and it's a bit better there. Okay. Super thirty five, while cool, but I'm out in the street, it was dark. That. Um, FX30 shoots pretty well, you know, the dual gain, the ISO that they have. That 2500 is what I set it with. If you use like a 2.8 or, well, they usually like an F4 lens. If it's an F4 <laughs> 35, <laughs> Malcolm is going to up. It's a great lens. It's a great camera, Malcolm. We, we know that because we own them. Hey, and you're uh, looking at it right now. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So you can good. clean up the noise, and, and it, it's not as bad as, as people think. I think, you know, even on the, the photo side, for what we're thinking about, for most of us who do YouTube, you can clean it up pretty well. If okay. the big guys are utilizing Resolve to do their cleanup for the um, shoots, because even though Super 35 lenses, they have noise. You've seen movies and it's green. It's not noise, it's green. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not a matter what you say. I think most of us people who are not professionals, we want everything to be clean and smooth all the time. And for shoot, you shoot the movies, you're using lighting, and sometimes it's going to be low light as well. And you're gonna have some some noise, so it's not yeah. that bad. You clean up most of it. Well, I, I was just looking at the Small Rigs website. They have a thousand dollar option for a light now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wasn't you a WPPI Robert that was showing having a review with somebody from Small Rig, and they were talking about getting into lighting as well? Or was so it somebody me? else? Me? Yeah. Uh, I did interview Small Rig, but we talked yeah. about uh video mounting accessories and also they do have this cool 60 watt light but that's not powerful but it's a pretty dope light um that yeah. i wish to get my hands on the, uh, this uh this ball rig i'm looking at that, that they were asking the grand for is, is by color it's 40 450 watt oh 450 yeah. watt yeah it's got a cooling fan it's i mean it's a nice somebody light. i saw I mean, bowen's yeah. mount i think I'd trust small rig yeah. if I'm not going to get aperture, but you know, aperture is more. Aperture is just the name more out. More. It's like buying Apple. <laughs> well, I mean, you got to remember, aperture wasn't a big name back in the day, but they've worked their way up from what they used to be into what they are now. And now everybody's so like good. aperture. Yeah, I mean, they yeah. to be on the tip of the tongue. And then, um, what's about to say? Um, yeah, no, you're absolutely right about that part. <clears throat> And I want power. Like I seriously, I want to be able to use it as a sun outside of a window in the daytime mm -hmm. to light the room. And um, I don't want that. What is it? 11, 1200 or whatever. That's a little too much. And it's not very practical, but the 600 is powerful and practical. Right. And um, yeah, I could always turn it down. That's my thing, especially for film. Like there were some times where I was like, uh, and I had to go to even though it's a dual native ISO in Panasonic when you shoot mm -hmm. uh vlog, but at 4,000, you still want to wish you could go lower, you know, if you didn't have to go there. And um, so those are just some gripes, anyway. I'm looking at the damn aperture, okay? All right, so um, uh, <laughs> one main important thing you have not touched on that is absolutely vital for video is audio. Damn, you're absolutely yes. right. I didn't talk about that. Okay, look, I, I, I had two hours for this live stream, okay, guys? <laughs> All right, we're going into three. Um, you're absolutely right. Audio is important. I have th I have um, three, how can I say? Audio to carry for, like, multiple things. I have a short shotgun mic, the video go mic pro plus, whatever the hell. But that's only good for, like, three feet, like, if you're all, all up on it. Then I have a boom mic, a shotgun mic, an actual was NTG two or whatever it is, and then I have two sets of uh, lav mics. So like, because I always here's one thing I've realized: it's always good to get redundancy if you can, right? Mm -hmm. You might be running around with your mic, but I'd also mic the client straight up if you could, right? And because uh, sometimes something happens with the audio, man, where you swear you're getting something and it's. And the boom person doesn't know how to point the damn thing. And you're getting over here, footsteps and whatnot. So you're like, ooh, I'm glad I got clean audio somewhere else. So that's I, one. I think, I'm yeah, sorry. I think it's I think it's something's gonna fail. It's gonna be your audio somewhere. Hundred percent. Uh thank you, Wayne. Uh no, yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, yeah, audio. And I think people don't common people don't realize how important audio is until it's bad. Yeah. 
like, ooh, like, I'm not gonna lie, guys. You see my video that pops up tomorrow? Uh, the first thing I say, like, that my intro, the audio is bad because I, I laughed it to my, uh, in my car. I was trying to set up where I have a, a window mount. So I'm driving in the car, you know, internal car. So I was like, oh, this is fun. So I put my DJI mic in there. But I laughed it, and it was brushing all up in my shoulder because I'm driving now. So it's all hitting here. So you guys are probably going to call me out on it. Please do. Uh, <laughs> but make sure you press the like button. But, and, yeah. Okay, that's 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 a little iffy right there. Mine was a suction <laughs> cup mouth. Mine was a suction cup mouth. Uh, uh, that's brave. I, I, you know, it actually worked extremely well. And when, and when it was park? it was solid. No, I was seventy five oh. eighty man. No, here, here's oh, how. It, here's how it's, oh yeah. So oh, you got it. Oh, you got it. Tethered. Okay. It was latched in on the tether for the safety seat or the child yeah. seat. Okay. And uh, yeah, I was doing yeah. that yesterday. That's that's boss. Um, so you guys are gonna complain about it the video, but right after that, the audio is just fine. But the intro part, it's like a little rough. A nice. Please apologize, you know. Uh, but if you're gonna, but I like bad comments too, folks. So feel free to throw a bad comment. The algorithm doesn't care. Um, I, I heard it's good to have a ten percent negative rating on your on well, your there likes. You go. Yeah, you know? someone's watching. The that mean, that means there's there's means there's dispute. And people love dispute. Oh, the, good point. <laughs> I like that. No wonder Jerry Springer was so popular, right? Um, <laughs> Chris says, Wayne, I appreciate the feedback. I have watched a few of your videos in the past and just subscribed. Oops. There you go. There you go, Wayne. Sharon is caring. There you go. Uh, you're welcome, Chris. Uh, so he, there you go. Wayne is quick with the fingers. <laughs> so that's pretty awesome. Uh, guys, I'm going to have to call it quits because I wake up at 5 a.m. for the gym and I haven't had dinner yet. So, Ooh, okay. yeah, tomorrow is um, gym day. So, hey, I do want to say thank you all for jumping on my panel. Okay, this has been really awesome. And Wayne, thank you for sharing. Seriously, you and and King Crook really spreading some knowledge about these cine lenses. I'm still, as I said, I admit I'm learning as I'm sharing cine lenses. I'm getting more into uh, yeah. the video side. I. I have more experience in that area, but the cine lenses, there's so much to learn. Um, but this is what this is about. This is why we have these these community panels. I, that's what these really are, a community panel, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I will be live next week, everybody. Same time, 5 o'clock Thursday. If you all want to jump back on, this will be a regular thing. I know I've been kind of like MIA for quite some time. You know, just I've been just jumping on like a ninja in Malcolm's live streams. Malcolm, when is your live stream? Uh, Monday nights, 9 p.m. Central. So it's that's a 7, 7 p.m. Uh, Pacific. There you go. Make sure you go subscribe to him. Central. So we're back 10 o'clock my time. I remember I've been missing you, man, because oh, we, we we all good 12, 13 hours, different, depending on what time it is. Yeah, see, we'd, be, we'd be 45 minutes into mine right now. So. Wow, I I have to start late. Got got to you know, oh. get the kids to bed and all that that good stuff. Cooley's taking our picture. Yeah, <laughs> everybody smile. <laughs> what a, what a yeah, Malcolm, sorry I'm missing you. I haven't saw your thing in a while because I've been trying to get some sleep these days. Hey, the fact that you're across the world and we can have this conversation is amazing <laughs> enough, man. No kidding. Is that amazing? And look at that little camera. That's little okay. Tiny camera. I got something. I got something for uh, a mouth. <laughs> Check this out. You guys oh, see, that? What is see that? that? It look how dusty it is. That's how, I use, that's how much I use. That's how much I use Sony. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it's when Sony first like going heavy on um, what is this? The seven R. Oh, it is. Right. Oh. It just says R, not even two or anything, but it's an actual. Uh, can you see that? Yeah, drive? it's a USB, USB yeah, drive. A USB. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. And um, there you go. So it's a there USB. I think it's like sixteen gigs or something. Oh, and look, wow. lens cap comes off. Oh jeez. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> so when I was working at Mike's camera, they were giving these away. You know, Sony reps were giving these away. But it's the coolest thing, isn't it? 
So with all that said, I just put it on the shelf. But boy, it's got a lot of dust on it. That's what it get. That's what they get for giving it to a Nikon shooter. So there you go. <laughs> So, anywho, I still never bought a so you know, just because Sony's are great, but like once you're sold into a Nikon or a system, it's hard for me to give it up. Hey, let me see that again. What is that? Uh, the water bottle? That's a water bottle. Shout out to that. There you I go. got the other one. I got that in this <laughs> so far. Awesome. You're gonna get a lot, man, because I'm, I'm I'm gonna keep pushing you as the Sony channel, man. For yeah. real. <laughs> Uh, it looks like we got some great. Uh, thank you for live all on the panel. Awesome. Thank you, King Crook. Thank you very much. Mine is dustier. Uh, <laughs> thank you, panel. Thank you, Chris, for tuning in. Thank you, Wayne, obviously, for jumping on and answering these chats. You're like a good admin, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I do that on pretty much all the other, you know, stuff that I'm on, Chuck's and Jeffrey's. You watch okay. the chat because you want, you want the people in the chat to know that they're appreciated and try to answer the questions. It's a lot of people sometimes we go too fast, but I try to at least, you know, communicate. Keep up. Yeah, I wish yeah. mine was moving that it's... fast. You could keep up with mine, unfortunately. But the <laughs> uh but it does help me because I could keep talking and moving along. And yeah, it does help. I, uh Derek was good at helping me with that. Uh but he he decided oh. to get, get a girlfriend. Uh so oh. No. Uh, I was like, How's he doing? <laughs> no, he's doing great. I told him to jump on today, and I tell him that you guys ask about him every once in a while. Yeah. And I'm like, bro, yeah. you need to start. He needs to start his Fuji channel. We need yeah, to all does. tell him to start his Fuji channel. He'd be great. Yeah. And um, I said, there's not too many brothers that dedicated to Fuji cameras. It would be phenomenal. Man, I can just see it. Fuji Fridays, man. Oh. There you go. There you go. And everything. <laughs> That's a good awesome. one. That's a great one. All right, Malcolm, I'm going to tell him that. Um, there you go. All right, guys. You don't have to shoot the food. You, you know. can watch him. Milkshake Monday. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Milkshake Monday. Milk yeah, that's Monday. that's that's mine over here. It's we got, <laughs> a, we got a running joke on. <laughs> All right, there you go. I got that for you. All right, guys, have a good night. Let me do my outro. Thank you so good much. Good night, everybody. Night. Thank you for joining in. Thank you. All right. There we go. All right, everybody. Well, you already know what time it is. It's time for me to get the heck up out of here. Now, before I do, I do want to say, come on now. Check out my workshops over at robertsilphotography.com. Because the next one I have is the how to record video with a Nikon mirrorless camera. That's right. We're going to go over the menu system, video types, and all the codecs it offers, the pros, the cons, the ups and downs, and also some video production basics, some fundamentals, if you will. All right. I'm going to talk about audio as well. So don't worry, Ken Crook. We got you there. And we're going to be talking about uh, lens choices and so forth and so on. But most importantly, we're going to go over the video recording menu of the Nikon Z cameras. So head on over to my website or click the link in the description section for you to check out the details. Currently, I'm hosting a 10% off for anyone that registers now. All right. And then um, clearly, make sure you go ahead and press that like, that share and subscribe. And smash the bell icon to get notifications for my upcoming live streams and video content. Tomorrow, I am posting a new video for all of you. So check it out on my channel. And it will be my hiking through Muir Woods over in Mill Valley with the Nikon ZF. I share photos and some hiking and some beautiful views throughout that national park. It's a gorgeous park. If you're ever in the Bay Area, go check it out. I'm also hosting a in-person, immersive, mastering studio portrait lighting workshop over in the Bay Area. So you definitely want to go check that out again at robertsilverphotography.com. Of course, as many of you know, I'll be hosting another live stream next Wednesday, same bat place, same bat time. That's 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for all of you. I am your host, Robert Silver. And until next time, keep shooting and stay creative. Thank you for watching.